Okay, we are live. Great, great, great. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Truth Seeker Podcast. I got my friend, Justin Paul Abraham. And one of the cool things that I love about doing these podcasts in a, in a particular way is that many times the first time that I talk to somebody, it's it's caught on camera. Like you guys get to sit in on a conversation that me and and my guests would have. And there's so many beautiful conversations that I've had over the years. And and uh, the same is to be said today. Welcome everyone, Justin, Paul, Abraham, to the True Seeker Podcast. Brother, been a long time coming, man. How are you? Thank you, Truth Seeker. It's really good to be with you, man. Good to have you, good to have you. Um, I'm definitely familiar with your work and your bliss and things that you've you've sprinkled and um, been talking about for years or or, or coming <laughs> into my into my circle in my realm to look up and one of them being like the the saints of old the Catholic saints and and their mm. ecstasies and their encounters and um, that has kind of come full circle for me at the beginning of the year and beginning to hear you mention them and then be drawn to um, remembering them the remembering word is, is a very mm. beautiful word that i've been studying today um your work is amazing you've uh, encouraged so many people to to drink of the lord to taste and see that the lord is is good so uh, i commend mm. you man for what you're doing and uh many people our hearts are ablaze because of your devotion and answering the call man uh glad to have you thank here you. bro thank you that's very kind <laughs> <laughs> so I want, appreciate I, you I wanted, also and you know, what you bring and you know who you are amen. And, the, and the and the realm of love that you walk in you know i get a lot of invites to go on stuff but i don't actually go on a lot of things because um i have to feel that frequency you know and you carry that frequency so i honor you thank you for what you're doing yes sir yes sir i'm i'm with you um it's good stuff uh, I'm gonna make sure we got, there's people here hanging out with us in the chat. So if you guys post questions and comments uh, a little bit later, we'll, we'll we'll get to them with us in the chat. Make sure you guys share this out too, because there's somebody on your feed that, that needs to see this. Um, they need to see um, love coming together, loving people, um, the deep beauty of God manifested and articulated in, in, in speech, the, the, the really deep, mysteries of God made simple and the simplicities of God made deep as well, which is, I think, what we both do. Um, so really excited to, to dive in with you. I want to talk about the Catholic saints. I want to talk about a lot of that stuff um, and, and those definitions and terms and what they mean to you and that kind of stuff. But first of all, for anybody in my audience who, who don't know who you are, what you do, what you bring to the table, just kind of give an overview who you are, what you do, and then we'll start there. Okay. I know you always start with that question. It's a I tricky know. one, isn't it? Because when we're in this realm of expanded consciousness and awakening into light and a new age, the next age, um, you know, the divine Jesus is channeling so much through mm. us, through revelation, love, joy, that we don't really even know what we're going to be doing next because there's an expansion happening. So what I bring to the table right now is spiritual technology how does the spirit realm work how do we enter into higher consciousness states how do we enter into awareness and awakening and union and then from there exploring this new creation life and um, exploring the cosmos exploring heaven exploring the divine exploring creation and the sacred dance um, exploring the capacities we have hidden within us, such as remote sight, cardionosis, which is another word, is a Christian word for telepathy, um, engaging, interfacing, um, walking with angels, engaging mysteries. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. So I've written a book about it called Beyond Human. And I've been doing podcasts for like 12 years. And those podcasts started off as just me talking to a few people in a room. And I didn't expect them to grow like they did. Um, 
they just expanded and and you know the lord spoke to me god spoke to me and said release and you will increase mm. if you I'll, he said i'll show you the power of a creative life and he said if you give away the idea you have and someone else can do what you do it will make you grow into bigger and bigger spaces because as you release you will increase so we just started giving away our stuff and we funded ourselves for the first couple of years and then I got loads of just people finding it through friends. They would tell friends we didn't have a marketing team or strategy, we still don't. I don't really do any of those normal ways of getting out there. It was a sovereign, joy-filled surprise. So now, you know, I'm still primarily a contemplative mystic. So I don't I'm not working hard trying to generate business or whatever else. I want to engage the mysteries of the next age. And I guess what I'm bringing to the table is the desire to create a better world. So it's not it's not even like church focused. It's not even it's bigger than that. It's about everything everywhere being changed for the good of everyone and the age of light, wisdom and love where technology will look like magic. We'll walk in union and love. Our frequency will open up and we'll be able to sense each other. We'll be able to engage animals, nature, creation, weather, enter into cosmic awareness, multidimensional awareness, and awareness of what we are as a species and how we interface and merge and blend into the divine and how we function as a representative of the divine. And so it's very big, it's very broad, but it's also very simple. So even in all of those things, I try to make it ultra simple because I believe it is simple. I believe it's just in the same way you go to school and learn to read and write and all these other things, we've got all these spiritual capacities in us already, embedded in us. We were made from breath and body. And that breath is already in us, the sparks in us. Um, in him, we live and move and have our being. But when we become aware of it, we're transformed by the renewing of our minds. So the problem is the way we think is determining the world we see. So if you think you can't move in those realms, if you think you can't see healings or move in the prophetic or oracle spirit, you won't because you are a gate and a door and you shut that capacity within yourself. So repentance for me is is being transformed it's return to the high place repent penthouse pent up um tashuv hey in hebrew which means return to the breath or being return to being so for me i'm i'm helping people come into synergy with the trueness of who they are and getting rid of the angry god version of christianity getting rid of the god's always urgent everything's always you know a crisis i don't believe that's what the divine is like at all um you know you think even how long it took the lord to shape the galaxies and this planet he's totally the most kind gentle <laughs> patient being you can ever encounter so i've tried to communicate these incredible truths from a place of intoxication joy pulling people in rather than hitting people with a stick. I don't think hitting people with a stick works. It's never worked. That's why God got rid of it in the old covenant. It's like, I'll try this with you guys. Bang, bang, bang. It didn't really change them. They just obeyed because of the stick. So he said, now I'm going to show you the real way I function, which is love. And Jesus came and showed it. He showed it and opened it up for everyone to realize that they're included, that we're all participating. And he included us by his own choice and loves us for god so loved the world he didn't love a section of the world he loved the whole world and one one um, translation says he he hugged it to himself he embraced it to himself and now we're back where we've always wanted to be so we as a species are discovering truth the truth will set you free so that's kind of where i'm coming from and i'm always open to change i don't feel like i'm an expert because when you go into these limitless realms, you know everything that you know is a dot. And I'm okay with that because actually I'm not fighting for my thing. I'm absorbing limitless love and limitless life and going from glory to glory. So yeah, it's, it's, it's fun.
I love it. I've been doing it for about 17 years and uh, I'm really amazed at how things are really changing now. Like well, things have kicked into a totally different dimension now. Yeah. The conversations yeah. changed. You're part of that. We're, we're, we're like coming out of a coma, you know, as a species. Mm. So it's an exciting time to be doing this. That's so good, man. So good. Coming out of a coma. Um, like I'm reading about, you know, Christ going around and first of all, calling his 12, calling the disciples and waking them up. Hey, I know you're a fisherman, but you were put here to fish men, like not catch mm -hmm. fish to feed your family, but you're here to clean and catch fish. And we're going to, I'm going to teach you how to do that spiritually. So that's not what you were created to do. You're in a, you're in a daze. You're, you're under, um, you're in a coma. The word there yeah. is, uh, it's a beautiful word. Um, um, hypnos. You've been That's hypnotized. Right. hypnotized. You were created yeah. for something special, but you settled for fishing. Let me show you. Let me show you. You got a piece of it, but let me put you over here. Hypnos. The children of God are asleep, and the idea of a mm -hmm. sleeping giant. Wake up! Wake up! You hear his call. You remember who you are. He's revealing yeah. the idea, listen, of, we mentioned remembering. I remember the, uh, when you look up the definition of that word remembering, uh, I just looked at the definition on like Webster. It talks about like the word to, to bring into remembrance is to remember what we think is dead, like a ceremony of the dead, of what, at least what we think is dead. There is no, there is no death in the kingdom. There's only life, but it's a remembering of maybe a family member. Remember the the prophets remember a covenant that your forefathers forgot remember the saints of old remember saint Teresa of avila who you think is dead what happened <laughs> listen Beautiful. what happens when when christ says do this in remembrance of me because there i'm not i'm not dead i'm with you where two or three of you are gathered in my name in my remembrance i'm gonna show up and i'm gonna show out I'm going to heal you. I'm going to heal your land. I'm going to heal your emotions. I'm going to heal your trauma. I'm here to heal. Remember me, what I carry, what I represent, the, the beauty of attention and what we remember. And I'm, I'm remembering these saints for the first time. I've never, I don't, these are, they're brand new to me. Um, yeah. But I've noticed wild stuff. I've mentioned it as I remember them. And you, I'm sure you can attest, I'm starting to have the encounters that they wrote about. Mm. I'm starting to, to experience, or I have experienced it, but I didn't know how to articulate it because I didn't know that they wrote it down in a book uh, about angels showing up to them and coming at them with a flaming dagger of God's love. And they experienced it and begin to scream with agonizing pain because of the, 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 the beauty, but the terror and the majesty and the love, like all at the same time, I felt that. But to hear people's stories and remember, what what can you say to like remembering Jesus, remembering those who came before you, the great cloud of witnesses? They only exist in your in your cloud if you remember them, mm. and if you can remember them, you if you you can receive a, a prophet's reward. Their mm. reward was a for me is a, a portion of God's spirit, what they carried, that now. I can tap into it as I remember your story and as I, it's honoring. Let me honor St. Teresa of Avila. Let me, rem, let me remember and honor anyone. Let me remember and honor Bob Larson. Mm, it's beautiful. It's, you know, the, the way it works for me, even when you talk about it, I kind of go into it. So if I go go quiet and there's a delay, it's because my brain catches up to the fact that I'm... See, for me, this is an open realm. It's an open reality. And even just talking about it, I sense it. I taste it. It's, it's not or even not just... to cry, man. I've been it's crying. Not an yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. It's not even an intellectual thing. It's literally an enveloping and what we honor we attract and what we honor life flows through honor and when we put a value on something we see the treasure that it actually is these saints and all of these 
people that have journeyed on this earth before us, they love us. That's the reality. They absolutely love us. And we are not alone and we are never alone. You know, we're encompassed by such a great cloud of witnesses and it's beautiful. And, you know, it's so easy to access is just by enjoying it. Enjoying it like you are now, like the tears I consider and Teresa of Avila did, she considered them to be a manifestation of bliss. Yes, yes. You know, and I, I've cried many tears and she said, the tears attract the river and the river attracts the rains and you become this watered garden, this garden of beauty, a tender heart and tender love. And that is the way of the saints. The way of the saints was the way of love and the connection that we have for them. You know, maybe people on the call right now, if they, if they just stop, they'll feel it. Because the reality is there isn't a single person that's ever alone. Mm. We are one human species, all connected in oneness. Separation is an illusion. And even quantum physics shows this separation. You know, some physicists believe that when the Big Bang happened, it was all entangled at the beginning. So, you know, I've heard physicists teach on this. So when, when it expanded, it looked separate, but really we were all entangled from that oneness, from that instant flash of love and light. So yeah, it's beautiful. And like, if people just like tune into this right now, they will feel it because the, the presence of love, the divine Yeshua, Jesus is always there. The saints are there. Angels are there. And it's so gentle that you just gently open to it and you will realize you'll taste it. You don't have to think it. You know, the natural mind can't receive the things of the spirit. So I don't process God here. I taste his goodness and love and let it just be there without trying to figure any of it out. The saints, I interact with them and I don't try and figure it out the angels, and then the conversation happens from within. It, it, the, the, the conversation happens from the heart scape, from the center of our being, from the overflow of the heart, not the mind. But then the mind becomes filled with knowledge and illumination comes to it, but through infusion, not through rational trying to figure it out. And that's how a lot of scientists got their inventions, yeah. musicians got their songs. Yeah. Even modern day people like, you know, someone sent me a video of Michael Jackson the other day and he was talking about how he would get this knowledge. You'd have to write it down, you'd get the beat, it'd come to him, the song would come to him, the construction of it. Because we're in this beautiful dance all the time. The Trinitarian embrace, the great dance is happening continually working its way throughout everything and everyone. And when you see that, you, you see a, a, a very different reality. You don't see a world that, that, that's broken, but you say it's good. It's good. You see a cosmos that is good, intrinsically good, because it's come from the good God. We get the word God from good in English. You know, it says in scripture that God is the happy God, the gloriously happy or blessed God. And it's the overflow of joy that creates all these relationships because God is a community. And the goal of the Trinity is inclusion. That's why creation exists, is for inclusion. Inclusion with everyone, everywhere. You know, there's this one verse in Ephesians I love where it says that Jesus was raised up above all the heavens so he could fill everything and be everywhere. So the essence of Christ fills everything, everywhere. He's the all in all. When you start to see this, the wonder and rest and joy, that all of it is connected, whether you're doing music, art. I've been painting this week just for fun, because that's what the divine dance is doing in me right now. He's not getting me to do anything but enjoy 
this life that he's given me in its many forms, you know? And when we enjoy life, we really glorify God that, you know, by enjoying him, we glorify him and by enjoying the world and everything that's been created. But the saints are a part of that. You know, they have so much to share with us, so much to give to us and not just the saints, but other beings that exist like the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom is a very powerful feminine being that's bigger than the universe. She was created before, before this universe. And she exists as far part of the first works of creation. And she wants to help humanity navigate into the age of light, into the age of wisdom, into the age of immortality, into the age of life expansion, cosmic awareness, and ecological and energetic abundance. So she wants to help us and is intimately reaching out. She stands at the pathways and says, learn from me. I want to help you. You know, in, 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 the, in Proverbs, it says she delighted in the sons, sons of God. She delighted in the children of men. She played and delighted in, in this creation that's here right now. So there's those beings as well to remember. We know them. And Psalm 22 verse 27 says, all the nations will turn and remember. So every nation, every person is going to begin to remember their authentic genesis. Their genesis isn't the story in Adam. It's a divine story that even supersedes that. Our authentic genesis is in Christ. Christ is the blueprint and reality of our design. He reveals God's mind made up about humanity, that God is for us. It's a radical breaking through of every separation mindset that we have. Even the way Yeshua was born in a stable with animals, shepherds, kings who were magi, as you know, they were the new ages were there, <laughs> the shepherds were there, the animals were there, all these people were there. And that was a picture of him, what Yeshua Emmanuel is doing, drawing all of us back together, back around this gentle being, this tender being, which is love, a baby, and the innocence and purity and magnetism of love. That is what's going to transform the human heart. Like it says in scripture, it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. And, you know, I think a lot of Christianity has been hijacked by Roman, the Roman Empire in ancient times, and then the English kings and different empires and Roman power. And I think a lot of what we think is Christianity, when you look at the history of it, it's not Christianity at all. It's our religion, our, our tradition's been hijacked by empire. And I think one of the things that you're doing and I'm doing is we are just walking away from it. We're not trying to fight it and we're keeping our love on, but we're not looking back because we've seen the way of love, the way of mystical, grace the way of beauty the way of tenderness and that world is beautiful that world everyone's powerful in that world everybody's free in that world everybody has a voice you know even the word ecclesia which is the word where we get church means ek means called out kaleo to have a voice so even what jesus wants to create is not a building it's not a religion it's not an institution it's people who are called out to have a voice, an expression, a flow, a beauty that together is unreal, unreal. So yeah, we can enjoy it, brother. It's good that you felt that and it's good that you stopped. See, that's the key of being a mystic. A mystic has to realize when wonder is happening and embrace the wonder, you know, not push it aside. The wonder of a baby, the wonder of a song, the wonder of a beautiful meal, the, the, the wonder of marriage, the wonder of, of life and the wonder of the presence that comes and the wonder of the saints coming close to us to mentor us and help us. A mystic is a person that chooses to live in childlike wonder. They see the miracle in everything around them that even all of this is miraculous. The existence of this planet and who we are is a miracle. So we are people who live in wonder. 
<laughs> I don't want to get into talking mode. So if you want to ask me some no, questions, yeah, yeah. that's, that's, just, that's uh, fine. I'm just sharing my kind of philosophy no, and good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have to look. I, I just I wanted to look up wonder um, in Hebrew. You know, then people, many people have been asking me about this song I'm playing in the background. I don't know if it sounds familiar of you, to you, but I had it. I had it made. But it's a, uh, it's a good song. But the song is Wonder by Amanda, yeah. by Amanda Cook. So people are like, what song is that? How, how can I download it? And it's a beautiful song, beautiful backing track. I, I had it made. But the actual song's even better. Go listen to Amanda Cook's song, Wonder. That's the song for those who didn't know. But I looked up at least one of the Hebrew words for wonder. And it's uh, um, a miracle by implication, a token or an omen, a sign and a wonder. Um, many of these words, even letters, we're finding now that the, the Hebrews and the mystics they engage these as living, living letters, as almost angelic beings. That wonder was mm -hmm. what wonder had a place at their table. The, yeah. the, the the awe and the wonder that they that that they carried. It was a marvel. Marvel is, is one of the same words for wonder. And the people marveled at the at the miracles of Jesus. They marveled. They were left in awe. They were That's astonished. Right. You know, and um, that word also is used with a different, you know, the word marvel and wonder is also the same word in Greek that's used for um, bewitched. When someone would use spiritual technology, when someone would use things and tr do it to trick people, they would use a different, it's the same word in, in Greek there, but it's the word we get in English is to bewitch because you, you tricked as Jesus would, would perform a miracle, which was out of love and restoration. Other ones, other people would do it to be seen. And so mm -hmm. you, you, you copy that, you learn how to do that so that you can trick people or get people to pay attention to you. And that's that's all of that. It's the same thing, same word, but it's the position of the heart. Why did you do that? Why'd you do that? Because you want to be seen? Well, if you did, like, be honest with that. That's cool. Like, if you want to be seen, be honest with, with it, but, I, but but get it out of you, you know, but but be honest. I, identify it so that it can be taken out of you. That was Paul no, or Peter and, and um, uh, Simon, the, the sorcerer, who saw them laying hands on people and they received the Holy Spirit. He's like, hey, he just responded to the gospel and he was, a, he was doing signs and wonders, but they were false. But he said, I wanna, mm -hmm. I wanna do what you guys are doing. I'll buy it from you, I have money. And I was just contemplating on it a while ago. Like, I don't even think that there was a bad thing that he wanted to buy it because he wanted to sow into it. Like he understood that if you honor a prophet that you could receive a prophet's reward. Listen, let me support, let me sow in, let me partner with you and I, I want to learn it. And they rebuked him. They didn't re rebuke him because he wanted to learn it. They rebuked him because Peter discerned his heart. He said, you're doing this because you want to be seen. You're doing this because you've been hurt and you need to be proven right. You need to do miracles. You need to gain power. Even though that seems right for the wrong reasons. So the next question, next, the next idea I want to throw at you, the idea that we all have to deal with, and there's a place where these two meet, but it's the head knowledge or gnosis, understanding, Bible knowledge, antiquity knowledge, all of it. You're a man of understanding. You read, you cite sources, you give glory, right? You're not, you're not just, Hey spirit, man, whatever's there. Like you, you're, you're a man of understanding, yeah. but it, it joins somewhere where it has to come out of here and it has to drop down into the heart space so that th these two become one and, and they meet halfway. Did you ever, were you ever in of like knowledge for the sake of knowledge or just so much into like book smarts or having to be right to be right, like having to learn or teach the scriptures out of acceptance or how much you know, or has it always been a place of like, I'm, it's always been heart, 
I've never been tempted because you are a man of understanding. Most people who haven't, they stay there, but they don't have a lot of, they're not learned men, you know? So these two fight with yeah. Gnosticism, Gnosis versus like, hey, I just want to rest in his, in his goodness. And whatever I learn, I'm going to take it to there to see if it, if he, if it, if it's, if it's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, like we're in such a beautiful presence right now. So I love knowledge, but, and I read a lot and I study, but it's like the lamp of the inner being illuminates my consciousness so that that light shines into the knowledge. So that all, although I'm processing knowledge, it's like a sec, there's a, a primary source that's infusing what I need from that knowledge. So it's drawing out truth, it's drawing out understanding, it's drawing out revelation. It's difficult to explain how it works and I'm <laughs> struggling for language here. It's like I used to have a really busy mind and my mind would pull me out of these ecstasies, it would pull me out of the realm I was in. So over time, the Lord helped me to live from within here, not here. Mm -hmm. And this part of me is like relaxed, sitting back. It's not trying to figure anything out, even this conversation. It's there, it's observing it, but the core of who I am, which is a being of light, which is entangled and enfolded into the divine, which is limitless in capacity, is becoming the governing entity of my nature. Mm. So that is like where I'm flowing from and growing from. Um, it's hard to explain. It really is. Um, I'll sometimes have an encounter, an experience in the spirit, and I'll get so much knowledge in a moment that it will take me a couple of years to unpack <laughs> it through our conversations. Um, even in like, even this is kind of crazy, but even in like seconds sometimes, like I can have like a second it'll come to me and I will know a trend that's going to happen in the news or I will know if this person's telling the truth or I'll even know a lot about a person. You know, one time I walked past a person and, and made contact with their shoulder as we walked through a door and I knew loads about the person. It just went boom like that and it comes from within. It's it's an inner knowledge because learning takes time. So it's not like come, it doesn't come in a normal way. It's come in a different way where it's almost like it, it's like a beam of light that infuses you with truth. But I still do the practical part of studying. So like if I look at a word like you are, mm -hmm. I'll engage it. I'll look at the Hebrew letters or I'll taste it. I'll get whacked off it. I'll maybe I'll even stop because the presence comes and I'll let it sit on me. And what I find is I find all of these connections happen and it'll trigger off all these other thoughts, science, spirituality, futurism, scriptures. And it's like a network forms. And then I create a talk from that network. And that's kind of how it works for me. Like no truth is ever separate from another truth. So all truth is enfolded into one another and all of it's entangled and funneling in this, this dance. So it's like this, the music plays and that's the music of the saints. That's the music of the angels or some type of angels because there are many species, many languages and many dimensions and many enfolding layers of the angelic. But you'll know, oh, that's the sound and frequency of the angel that works with me. And you'll have knowledge in that frequency. You'll have knowledge in that presence. Even when you feel the presence of a person, you'll have knowledge. Or when you're in a place, you'll have knowledge. You'll go to a city or a country, you'll, you'll sense it. It's learning to turn into it because it's all there. It's all there. And I'm not an expert on this. Believe me, I'm not. I have days where I can be switched off, but more and more over time, I want to be awake. I want to be aware and I want love to be the compassionate flow that comes from me. When I started teaching in the early days, I would hammer religion. And what I mean by religion is where people are dogmatic, nasty, mean. I would hammer it and that doesn't work. That doesn't change the human heart. So now I don't engage it, I go into wisdom 
and I release the frequency of life, the energy of life, and let that dismantle those structures. And that's a much more powerful way of doing it. And I'll literally see sometimes it ripple over people, hundreds of people, and it's the frequency of, of the divine activating and there'll be joy pockets and angels will move in saints will be moving the, the the angels associated with that that church or business that will be active and you're you're sitting in this gentle embrace enfolded in it in rest because it rest is the fastest speed in the universe rest is beyond light speed you can enfold the universe and go through into other dimensions and places in the stars through the government of rest. But when you try and push and you try and do this and try and do that, it shuts it down because you actually enforce the structure because you're believing uh, uh, an inferior reality. So when you rest in him and he rests in you, you have the capacity to live in limitless abundance, in simplicity, like Jesus said, my burden is easy and light. Now, a lot of traditional Christianity is putting more and more burdens on people. I guess what you're doing and I'm doing is taking them off and saying, you don't need that. You don't need that. Be free. Be like a child. Don't be afraid because perfect love casts out fear. And even your mistakes are enfolded in the dance to produce wonder, to produce restoration and awakening and growth. So, you know, one time the Lord said to me, I've got accidental insurance cover on your life. Even your accidents are covered. They're all part of this, this growth. So I don't really like have battles with people over scriptures or anything. What I do is I invite people into the mystery with the knowledge that I might be wrong. I'm okay with that because, because every one of us has got degrees of deception right now. Yeah. Because if we if we were fully undeceived or fully aware, we would be glowing right now. We would actually be transfiguring like Jesus because the word for be transformed by the renewing of your mind is the same word as transfigured. Mm. Metamorphosis, Metamorphosis is the same word. So there's not a single person right now. Well, there are some, but we won't maybe talk about those. I don't know. But, you know, most people are not transfiguring. <laughs> I've had moments, I've had flashes, but we've got a long way to go. Even all we know, and and this might offend people, I don't mean to offend people, but even the scriptures is just a slither because it's the earth book with the dispensation of, of Messiah's message to the earth, to this species, to this planet. So it's actually a very small element of the divine unfolding. So even that is just limitless because there's mysteries in it. But even that is partial. Even that is still small compared to the substance or what I call the dimension of the one, which is the Trinity, which is God, the source, the being, which is unlimited, you know? So anyway, I don't want to confuse people with what I'm saying. It, what I'm trying to say is it is simple. You just enjoy there that you union. You enjoy the light, and you find incredible things happen. But, like, but read your Bible. You know? <laughs> Too. Yeah. Absolutely, I love my Bible, but yeah. it, it's got to the point where, like, it. I've read it, and it encodes itself in me. It's strange. Not only does it encode itself in me, I'll be able to encode multiple translations of it in me, and I'll be able to access them and connect them together. And it's like, it's it's infused knowledge, but I love my Bible, I love it, but I'll maybe stay in one area of it, and that one area will open up lots of other dimensions in it. It's just, it's it's beautiful, I love it. I've got lots of translations of the Bible, and I love all the different translations. Yeah, there's so many mysteries, and so, you know, where, where I'm at, it's all a mystery, but hence the I will give you the knowledge to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven word kingdom we know is the, the realm heaven is celestial realm spiritual realm i'm going to show you how this works and operates unto them they don't understand but i'm gonna because you want to know 
Nobody yeah. cares. I was even contemplating the word esoteric. Like it's a scary word for some people. True seekers into esoterics or whatever, or like these scary words. Just like the reason it's esoteric is not because it's like bad. It's esoteric because nobody cares. Nobody cares about the things that that you care about. Nobody cares how do angels operate. Nobody cares does like how does this this does this word remembrance open up or does it just mean to think about is it that simple or is it are there some is it something to where jesus says again do this in remembrance of me or if you remember me in front of the people around you that are intimidating that are scary that are judging you if you remember me in front of them i'll remember you in front of the angels like what is that let's stop there stop there i'll remember you I will, before we jumped on this call, I was telling you how Nehemiah, at the end of his prayer, he says, I remembered that I was the Lord's cupbearer, was the king's cup holder. I was the king's delight. I now remember that this is who I am. This is why I'm here. Yeah. What happens when Jesus calls your name, when you, when you start to remember and that starts to unfold? I'm not my mm -hmm. job. I'm not how good I am at music. I'm not how much money's in my bank account. I'm something greater. I'm not even me. Like I'm, I existed before remembering. You, you had to be membered. You had to be a member. You had to be part of, of, right. of, of a oneness. And then you fell or cast out of that oneness and you were separated. But to remember it's to wh wh who Christ is. Listen, I'm. Br this is. Come here, little sheep. I'm coming after you. I'll leave the 99 for a moment to come and get you. And I've done it for you. You're going to remember who you are. I'm going to restore the love that we had before you came here. Restore. Remember. Mm -hmm. Replenish. I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to redeem you. You were. You were deemed righteous. You were deemed holy. You were deemed beautiful until you believed a lie nothing's changed you just believe their report who has believed our report this idea of remembering restoration i'm going to restore the love that we had i'm not i'm not who i think i am i'm definitely not who they think i am i'm learning i'm unlearning that's the the, the, the level of deception that is every day every breath every moment every tear that tear was a, was unlearning. Man, I thought I was only this. I thought his beauty was that. I thought this, mm, another wave of his mercy. He still loves me. He hasn't given up on me. Wow, why those, whatever is coming out of your heart that, that's not supposed to be there. That's the remember so that you can see him clearly. Even Paul said as, as he saw Jesus and he was blinded and he couldn't see. And then it was that scale, and it, scales fell from his eyes, and he can see. I can see clearly. Jesus prays for the the uh, the blind man, mm. and he prays for him to look up and to receive sight. And, do you see anything? What do you see? I'm I'm working with you. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tarry. I'm gonna hang out for a little while. What do you see now? Because he was moved with compassion. What do you see? I see. I do see things. I see. I see men, but they're kind of like trees. Okay. You don't see them for who they really are yet. You still see new agers. You see black people. You see white people. You see this. You see, oh, you don't see people for who they are. Let me pray for you again. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to tarry. I'm, I believe in you, man. I'm not giving up on you. And, and we see things as we are, as a tree. And whatever we say they become, you said that at the beginning. This is this, this is that, this is this. What is that? It's a man that looks like a tree. No, that's not what that is. It's whatever. Look in the mirror, what do you see? How many of us have these issues, I mean, these voices of insecurity that tell us things as the ego, as the Satan or whatever says, hey, you're, you're this or you're that, you're this or that. My favorite prayer, before I pray for anybody, before 
I think about a contemplative situation, it's very simple. Father, what would you say? Men have said this, and they say that, but what, and I would say this, like I would give you this wisdom, this is what I would do. Father, what would you say? And separate myself from me for a moment. Wow, tell them I love them. Tell them I forgive them. Tell them that there's there's greatness inside of them. Like, this is Jesus, God, this is what he, this is his every day. To see people not as though they were, but for really who they were and to restore that love. This is, he said, this is eternal life. John 17, that you'll know how much you're loved. What is eternal life, guys? What, what is eternity? Well, when we die and we go to heaven, no, that's not eternal life. Eternal life is heaven inside of you to know how much you're loved. And there's layers, 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 layers of how much we're loved. Because ho however much you're hated, that's a deception. You're deceived. You didn't know that there was grace to cover that, that there was love. While you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Oh, like, and, and like now, like what he's going to do, what, what he did 2,000 years ago. No, 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 no. Like before that, before when? Before, before the foundation of the earth. He was the lamb that was slain in the cosmos, in the heavens. Like God thought of you when, when he set this whole thing up. Like he, rem and, and now you're remembering. He remembered. And as you remember, you will be remembered. Man, come on. This is the beauty of simplicity. This is, these are simple terms. Remember. Remember me. I'll do this in remembrance of me. Listen, when you remember, something happens, man. Yeah. It's about union. Because even communion, where you're taking that remembering, and you're eating, you're being, you're one. Remember is connectivity. It's connection. It's realizing that you're a part of a bigger thing mm. and you belong, that you belong. So all the nations will turn and remember, they will know. And even that passage you quoted where eternal life is, is knowing God the Father and Jesus Christ, that word know there's you and you already know this, it means intimate engagement. It's the same root word as marriage. It's not an intellect, just an intellectual thing. It's, I am so one with them and they are so one with me. Where do I begin and where do I end and where do they begin and end? And remembering even in the communion is like, I'm in him, he's in me, I'm his body. I'm hidden in Christ, Christ is hidden in me. And when you see this enfold in this entanglement, you, you just experience deep joy, deep joy peace, deep love, deep, because you know that all the separation was just an illusion. It was never true in the first place. You know, it says in scripture, we were enemies in our minds. You know, God has never, ever been our enemy. For God so loved the world, we were his enemies in our thinking. And what God has done is dismantled every idea of separation, every idea until the echo that goes through all eternity is that God is for us. And the way he wins us is not through wrath or fear or control or manipulation. It's through gentleness. It's through love. It's through a, a, a gentle embrace and an invitation into the sweetness of the breath, into meditation, into oneness, into love and kindness. And, you know, if I was to describe God, I once had a time where the father actually came into the room in a form that I could engage with. And the way I would describe him was, I felt him coming before he came. It was like the aura and presence of gentleness. It was like gentleness in its most wonderful, palatable, intoxicating form. And I was taking communion when this happened and he stood in front of me, this being of light, and put his hands over the communion and blessed it and immersed me in kindness, immersed me in gentleness. That is why he's called the good father. He's called the father of glory. And Jesus said, everything I do, I'm doing because he's already doing it. He's already on the cross. He's already healing the sick. He's already running after everyone, trying to find you, looking for you in all the crap, trying to find the real authentic being of light that you are. 
you know, Jesus is the light that lights the heart of every man. His spark, his essence in him, we live and move. His breath is in everyone. He will never leave us or forsake us. You know, he has set his affection on us and there is nothing that can separate us from that love, nothing. So what I've done is I surrendered to it because I tried drugs, I tried, I tried different lifestyles, I tried to fill that vacuum and in the end, Holy Spirit came and just inebriated me. And I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried. But I found what I was looking for. And my, the rest of my life since then, that was when I was 18, has been an unfolding of love. And I, I have an addiction, a compulsion, a tenderness towards the divine where I can't ever get away from love. It's like Paul said, the love that Christ has for me leaves me no choice. It presses me on every side. It is the spring of every action. And this love is saturating us right now, even through having this technology, this clothing, the things that we've got, the clean water that we have. Love is invading every single day. The world's improving. It might not look like that in the media, but the kingdom to the increase of the kingdom, which is the ecology of heaven, love, joy, and peace, it is growing. The media focuses on all the negatives, but every day people are getting clean water, education, human rights, new technologies, electricity. Every day people are learning to read for the first time. Every day healthcare is expanding, surgery is growing, dentistry is expanding, clothes and all these things we buy are cheaper than they've ever been. Energy technologies are growing. Cures are coming on the earth. Cures for cancer. Cures for dementia. Cures for aging. And, you know, it says in the last days, this is the last days where the last days of the old way of seeing, when I say last days, the last days it says we will tremble at his goodness. So we're coming into a time where we're trembling, not because of terror or anything like that we're trembling because we're overwhelmed by love we're overwhelmed by mercy we're overwhelmed by wonder that we start to see that everything's a miracle the fact you even exist that i exist is a miracle and we even contain within us the hydrogen from the big bang so even your body is made up of the parts that that universe expansion of love and then you realize wow where can I go from your presence? Like it says in the Psalms, where can I hide from you? You're everywhere and you are love. You know, it's beautiful. Once you see it, you, 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 you're hooked for life. There's no going back really. You know, that you become a mystic because a mystic, all a mystic means is someone that believes they can have a relationship with the divine being. Someone who loves the unseen as well and believes they can access it. And it means someone who is, who believes in searching out mysteries and mystical secrets. And it also means somebody who's who's found pleasure, who's found the source, the wine cellar is open and you've, you've tapped in, you've tapped in. And I think in this generation, I think what one of the things the Lord wants to do is restore the mystery, the mystic, the wonder, the joy, the sweetness, the wine, the party, the dance, the frequency, the song, the radiation of love until we are, we vibrate with it. We, we sound like it, we act like it, all different though. Because one thing I've learned about God, even in heaven, and I've been to lots of different heavens, because the word heaven in Bible is Hashemayim, and it means heavens, and they're all nested dimensions. Um, God doesn't force people to think the same even there. They're all growing very naturally. And we're all going to continue to grow. God is not a, a control freak. He is actually, he is dance itself. One theologian mm -hmm. said that, that God doesn't just dance. God is dance. You know, and the Bible's full of this wisdom. It says when she co-created with them at the beginning, it says she played. That's the word that's used. Satchak, rejoice, but it's actually the root word. She played, she danced, she made colors, she made frequencies. And, you know, God didn't even want to create alone. So it says when the earth was created, the sons of God shouted for joy. So celestial beings were included. The stars spoke. Everyone was included. Everybody who belongs. And that is 
what is so intoxicating. You know, Richard Rower, the Franciscan, says a mystic who is 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 a person who can see God everywhere. When we can see God everywhere, we can be blown away by it. You know, like even when we see evil, there's the wonder that God's God is still sustaining creation, that God refuses to give up love, that God refuses to stop reaching out. It's a violent, beautiful, incredible love that even like Satan, whatever Satan is, is sustained by love. That's the irony of it. You know, if, if God wanted to zap him and get rid of him, he'd be gone. But he's part of this unfolding, this training, this this releasing, this growth into what we're going to become, which is something this, the, the Bible says we don't even know what we are. Says, but now we are sons of God, but what we will be, we don't know. But when we see him, we'll be like him because we'll see him as he is. So even what we're tasting now is just the, it's the appetizers, it's the nibbles. And even this is getting me drunk. Even this is getting me whacked. Oh, this wine, mm, it's brilliant. And you're feasting and the saints are there and the angels are there and celestial beings, the sons of light and all these dimensions. And the Lord's saying, hey, you ain't seen nothing yet, people. If you could see who you are in a billion years, you would have no fears today. You'd have no identity crisis. You'd have no, I, no crisis over who you are because you would see the logic of love unfolding throughout time and space. And that's one of the things I love about being a mystic as well, is God allows us to see those timelines and he opens it up. So we realize Richard Rower calls it deep time. We start to see deep time. And we know, like um, Julian of Norwich said, that all is well and all shall be well. It is well. And you enter into this perpetual wellness and that's what eternal life is is the word everlasting is perpetuity which means you're in a perpetual state of life it's a beautiful strand a golden strand through space and time anyway over to you buddy i don't want to get into like preaching mode hey, or something on this whatever course, mode so we got that happen. listen we do all the mode modes man i love it um, <laughs> so good man thank you i mean bro you know i i i'm I, I love what you bring and I, and I, you know, again, like I said, this is just my, where I am, you know, and I love it, but I don't Google disagree free. with anything. I love, see, that's the thing about truth. Like truth doesn't need, it doesn't, it keeps no records of wrong. You know, it doesn't need to be right. Like no, your, your, your truth may, it, even if it's the exact opposite, like I don't, it doesn't need permission, nor does it need validation. It doesn't even really need you to, to stand up for it. It's beautiful when you partner with it and do it, but um, there, there's, you mentioned a beauty and rest. There's, the Bible says the servants of the Lord must not strive. Listen, it's, it's, not, it's not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Like there's, but, but there's a familiar sound when, 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 when truth is vocalized. And I, I wanted to focus on, or just ask you with, with your movement and, and mine, and there's a in the, the church age, with whatever that is, like in in this mystical, Christocentric stuff. Um, mm. There seems to be a lot of um, people who will say, I say, just just older people, older men and women that are tapping in. Like I went and seen Doctor O uh, a year ago. And uh, it was yeah. cool to hang out with him there um, at this church. And you think a bunch of young, young bucks who like carrying the anointing and just head first in it. There's a lot of old, old ladies, you know, <laughs> and, they, and they've been in the church realm, but they've been waiting to hear the truth vocalized and articulated. We're not convincing anyone of anything. I'm not here to change your mind. And that's like, when, that's rest. No, this is what I experience. This is what I encounter. And then the people are hearing it and they're like, wow, yeah, me too. They've been in church their whole lives. And it's so beautiful just to see all of the different age groups and generations and, and, and people who have been waiting. The Bible says that the, the, the entire, all of creation, everything have, have been waiting and is waiting for the manifestations. Even on a, that's on the, you know, 
um, macro, but on the micro, listen, your family is waiting. Like everyone is waiting for you mm. to line up and, 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 and to be who God has called you to be, to find out yeah. what that is, hear your song and then sing it. And, and I think we see it in that older generation that that's coming in and, and how thankful they are that, that they're finally, they've heard every preacher under the sun and they're, they're yeah. married to Christ. They love Christ and they have their portion in their revelations, but it's like, who's going to carry that torch and bring us to the, the, the next phase. And I just find that very beautiful with, uh, the different mystical Christian, uh, ministries that are, um, you know, mm. waking up the sleeping giants, man. So yeah. beautiful. It is beautiful. It's one of the mysteries that we've forgotten in the Western world. There's an experiment that's gone on in the Western world where we're the first culture ever to forget eldership. Mm. Now, the elder, the wise person of the village was an essential part of every culture throughout history. You sat at their feet. You listened to the wisdom that they had. And one of the things that I think has been restored to the West right now, and you're seeing the trend because a lot of older people still, you know, look at music, Rolling Stones, you know, um, you know, people like Paul McCartney, Tom Jones, really old people. And people are going to like all these events in a droves because we're beginning to recognize the agelessness and the wisdom and that comes with age. And a lot of these people come to my events too because they're at the point where they've let go of ego. They have let go of trying to do it their way. They've fallen upwards. That's the term Richard Rower calls it, where you you fall upwards and you let go of being, being you know, egotistical and you start to see the big picture, the, the beauty, deep time, your place in it, and you're open to it and you can sense it, you can smell it and taste it. So one of the things that I believe has been restored in our generation is eldership. Not eldership in a controlling way, not eldership in an old fashioned way, but the wisdom of people who've walked and been and experienced. And I think that's something this, this culture is now awakening to. It's a culture where we realize we've had it wrong. We've, we've had the wrong, we've had it flipped upside down. Now, you know, this is, I'll quickly tell the story, but I was in Australia doing a meeting with all these people. And there was this woman there in her 80s. She was like, I don't know if she was like 86 or something. She was an amazing woman. She was so hungry. She drove four hours to get to the meeting. She was there early. Now, I was standing and talking and all this presence was breaking out over the crowd. They were all standing up and moving. It was beautiful. I saw her face lifted up to heaven and it was shining. And I could see she was in an ecstasy. I didn't know her well or anything, but I decided to walk down off the stage and give her the microphone and say, what, what can you see? Now, she could have said anything at this point, but I just knew this was a divine moment. She was going, oh, I'm not here, I'm in heaven. And her face was shining. She was going, oh, oh, and I was just, I was feeling it. I was, we all were, everyone was pressing in. We were all standing up. All the chairs had been taken out. And we were just feeling this old lady as she was like engaged in the, the heaven and she was having an outer body experience right there and then. She was having an outer body experience. Woo! And um, sorry, getting a bit, wow, blown away by it right now. I'm feeling it right now. And her face was shining. She looked up and she said, oh, oh, I see something. And I was thinking, what, what does she see? She was going, oh, oh, I see something. And then she said, oh, it's the elders. She saw the elders of heaven. Mm. You know, it talks about in the Bible that around the throne are these elders, these beings. We don't even know what they are. And they started to come into the room. Their presence started to come into the room. And it was amazing. And, and I had a massive download at that moment. And the Lord said he wants to see all of the shadow on earth of heaven. So what we honor here will come down. When we honor angels, it comes down. When we honor the saints, they come down. When we honor the elders, they have space to function. So what will it look like to have a culture where eldership is restored, the wise people are restored, the, the sages, the oracles? That's what we're coming into now in Hebraic. 
Moses started at 80, you know, and 80 is the number pay, which means voice, the voice that speaks. And I think we're going to see more and more life expansion and more and more people coming into their best days, even in their 80s, 90s, 100, because this realm is ageless. You know, Paul said this, I no longer see anyone in a human way. He said, you know, and even the Bible says, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, old and young, male and female, on everyone, everywhere. So I think these elders that walked in these pathways are going to go into super expanded states, regenerated bodies. We're going to see more and more cures for aging because we need eldership for where we're going next. The Western world needs it. We need it because we're coming into the age where we can't do it without each other. It's an age of harmony. It's an age of oneness. And you imagine like people's life expansion going to hundreds and hundreds of years and you get to sit with them and have a coffee with them and hear what their life has been like, maybe walking hundreds of years, because that's the technology that's opening up. If you look at the medicine and David Sinclair and telomere technology, NAD+, all these new technologies are coming to expand lifespans. We, you know, even in Time magazine, it said, you know, people being born now will probably live to 150. Other people have put it even longer. We, we really are coming to an age where we'll have these amazing people that have walked you know, imagine you, uh, truth seeker, if you if you stay on the earth for a couple of hundred years, how much you could impart, how much you could share, what it'd be like to sit with you and talk with you as you share all the things you've gone through with Yahweh, all the journeys, all the encounters, all the realms, all the things you've innovated, all the music and sounds, a new technology you've developed, all the lyrics and the, the chemistry and the alchemy of sound that you've created. You know, that is where we're going. So. I think there's something beautiful on agelessness and we can't keep seeing people through a human lens because we're beings of light. So like I said, Paul said, I no longer look at anyone in the flesh. The flesh isn't who we really are. It's hosting us, but we are something beyond human. Mm. We are something much, much bigger than that. That's good. The, the, the infinite wisdom, the infinite possibilities, the infinite abundance that exists within and around each and every one of us on every level of it, wherever existence is, wherever life is to tap into that. Um, you know, many, many people in, in the new age circles and stuff, they, they bring up the term like Akashic or whatever, like where all the memories, this place where this cloud, mm -hmm. if you will, like it's kind of interesting yeah. that what the, the morphogenic the, field theory, there's like a meme or whatever, where like, Moses has the tablets and is like he's the first one that down coming down from the mountain he's the first one that downloaded from the cloud he went into the cloud and got a download like yeah. these places that remember everything and I, as you know and many of you maybe encounters or, or studies angels there's angels of remembrance there, there's angels or their, their job is to scribe to write down That's the right. deeds and write and, and bring into remembrance these things um I'm just, yeah. I'm kind of I'm kind of stuck on that word, which is which is very beautiful. But um, who you are, what you need to remember, infinite possibilities that reside within you. Um, sitting in that, like you said, you get a download that's like take you months, years to unpack, callings, bliss, like healed trauma, healed past, healed family tree in a moment that 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 literally generations are going to see for, for gen, it's going to like hundreds of thousands millennia because of the work that you did you tapped into this thing that is resonance it's that there, there's there's ripples in it it's not just you you you're tied in and tapped into something bigger the, the bible talks about having the the book of life and having your name in that book and um and to, to be remembered, everything that's ever existed and ever happened. And listen, when we start engaging with that, it's uh, strange for the, for the first times, so, you know, these, we call them downloads, you know, and downloads are great. They're awesome. The, the ancient um, um, Greeks called it an epiphany, an epiphany where mm -hmm. a god or an angel, a divine being, will come into your midst and impart knowledge or, or 
Mo you know, most of this isn't new. Some of it's new. You're mentioning new technologies, but many of this ain't technology was heavenly and existed a long time ago that was forgotten. So you got to be reminded from that cloud. You mentioned Michael Jackson, who says, listen, I woke up and there was a song in my head. He called his producer in that video. He said, he, he's like three in the morning. Hey, I ne we need to go into the studio now. There's a song. I need to record it. I need to write it down. We'll, we'll yeah. go at seven. We got a session booked at seven. We're going to get up early, early start. No, I have to go now. The interesting part of that, he says, I have to, because if I don't, then Prince, who's connected to the same cloud, Prince will hear the song and he'll record it and he'll write it. Like, this is how yeah. much he knew that this information is coming. But it's like, who's going to contemplate it? Who's going to unfold it? Who's... It talks about like the Lord, the presence of the Lord is going throughout the, the earth to see who he can use. I, I, I love thinking about Samuel asleep and he hears a voice calling his name in the middle of the night. Um, nights have been strange for many of us right now. What's happening in the in the in the watches of the Lord, right? It's very strange. So to be able to talk about this stuff openly, um, Samuel woke up and he goes in, he talks to his elder, Levi. Levi, did, did, uh, Eli, I'm sorry. Uh, did, did you call me? Did you call my name? Three in the morning. No, I didn't. Go back to sleep. I could have swore I heard you. Go back to sleep. It's okay. Okay. I thought I heard you. Goes back to sleep. He hears the name again. Samuel. He wakes up. I thought I heard you. You can't tell me you didn't just say my name. It's not me. It's not me. I promise. Go back to bed. Wait, wait, wait. The next time you hear it, just say, Speak, Lord, for your, your servant hears. You got my attention. Who is that? Who's trying to get my attention? Because it could be the Lord. And he's sleeping and it, it happens again. And the next time that response to that, that sound birthed something in him that he was willing to be used. Because I'm sure he was tired. You could roll back over. Go back to sleep. You need a couple more hours of sleep. We'll do it tomorrow. If it happens tomorrow night, I'll do it. I'll do it tomorrow night. That is what you're able to carry, your container, your vessel. We want more, more, more. Hold on, your hands are full already. You got so much going on now. Wait, wait. Let me put some of it down. Let me give. Let me render it to God as an offering. Hey, I don't want this anymore. I'm going to take inventory and my hurt, my bitterness, my judgment. I don't need that. Can I'll give it to you as an offering. Great. Let my fire hit it. Now you can hold more. So when you are awakened, that was a story thousands of years ago. Today, tonight, when you wake up at three in the morning with somebody's name on your heart, with a with a vision, with a dream, with a with a scripture. Yes, Lord speak for your servants listening go 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 write the scripture down as you said get it out of you write it down that's just been so so beautiful because i can come back to it later even if if i forget i can come back as you're speaking i'm writing right. things down but getting it out of you writing it down inquiring rest that's wrestling that's contemplation say all of that to say how many other people are waking up that God wants to use and they, they roll over. And I, and it's not really about the other people. Um, what about you? How many times have you woke up and said, well, you know, maybe tomorrow? What is that? I'll do it later. And you put it off. And that very same thing that the Lord wanted to speak into the earth right now, someone else takes that, that message, that invention, whatever it is, and they're running with it. And you say, wow, I had the same dream. That's so weird. Listen, dude. Things that Elon Musk is, are, is doing right now, like I was dreaming about when I was a kid, like highways that go under the road yeah. and things like that of like, we can get there a lot faster if there was another highway that goes under or another road that can, and he's, he's literally, he's doing that. These are dreams and, and little ideas that I would think about as a kid, but I, I was a kid. I didn't, I, 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 well, at least I thought <laughs> that I couldn't do anything, but that information, those ideas are still out there for somebody who has the ability to bring it into this realm to go from the realm of the imagination the realm of the spirit to see a vision and then to bring it into this world 
Same thing with dreams, visions of God, of healing, of restoration, of a, a, of a hope and of a future. Jesus did it for us. So we are to take those same dreams and do that for others. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't look at the things as though they are, but what they have the infinite potential to be. That's not a, that's not a prostitute, guys, who was caught in an act of adultery. Yes, it is. She, we caught her in that. No, that's my daughter. I love her. She's, she, she's only, why don't you guys take up money? She's, she's trying to pay bills. She's going to be kicked out and put on the streets with, with her children. Why don't you guys take up money and everyone just give her a little bit? Cause there's 70 of you here. If everybody gave a small portion, her rent would be paid, you know, and we, we look at things and, and we speak to them by the outward appearance. The scripture says that God, that, that man judges by the outer appearance, but God judges the heart. He's able to look at the heart of a matter, the heart of an individual. And that's God. You know, he's, that's how God does things. Listen, he's given you his nature, his nature to not judge the things of the flesh, not to judge things before their appointed time, but to judge them by the spirit. So the same things that Christ was walking in, the same thing that, the, that Christ was able to see a person, a man with a withered hand, couldn't use it no more. Hey, I still got one hand on. I can use it very well. I can use it well. If, if, if a realm of infinite potential exists, Christ would look at him and say, you know, there's a, there's a realm, there's a timeline where that hand is made whole, where you still got that hand. Oh, yeah. Well, you can actually use it and, and make money for your family and do the work that God's called you to do. Yeah, but I got a withered hand. Well, there's a realm that exists where it doesn't stretch it forth and let me see it. To be a bridge, to be a portal of God's infinite potential of blessings, of abundance, of restoration, man, to all people. That's us, man. That was Christ to you, and that's also Christ through you. If we get that, we got to get it. That's That unfolds and opens any divine mystery you're trying to study. That's the heart of love. Infinite potential. So good. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, man. Yeah. You know, we've got to dream bigger. You know, we have to. The future belongs to those who believe in the power of their dreams. Dreams are what create reality. And faith actualizes what it realizes. So you realize it first and then you actualize that potential. And we can change things on a level we've never even imagined. We can reconfigure matter DNA, ecosystems, weather, you know, we're talking about the saints earlier, they did this stuff. We did wild stuff. I mean, some of the Celtic saints, well, I mean, they transform Britain and this is fact. Even when they do documentaries now, they have to, they put in there that there were miracles, but they were even doing group dead raisins from people who were drowned in like the lake. Like there was, a, there's this one saint called Kieran and, um, he, he, like all these guys were thrown in the lake after being killed on the roads. The king sent him to, to do something. He was praying and the, the lake drained out and he spoke over the bodies. All of them came back to life. And there's even accounts of them raising cooked animals back to life. Mm. Animals that have been stolen and cooked and them speaking and this stuff's happened. And it's actually what's created the Western world is it, we are in this Christian beautiful history mm -hmm. that's created freedom, democracy, human rights, education, you know? And we have to remember that. We have to remember where we've come from. How did we get where we are right now? Because Jesus fundamentally changed the world. Like the whole world, even the calendar is dated from there because the change that went through the whole frequency, the morphogenic field, even the earth shook when the cross happened because it was shaking the ground. The tombs opened. So dead people were raised back to life and walked into Jerusalem. So all the realms blurred. The veil was opened. The earth shook. It was cosmic in its implications. Now, when we see that, we see, wow, you know, that's a realm of life. It's not even knowledge. It's a realm of reality. It's a place of bliss that you could function in, live in, and just gently it'll grow because energy will come, life will flow, the river will flow, the tree will grow when you're planted in that divine 
union that apart from me you can do nothing but when we're planted in that union it just produces fruit it produces sweetness and it's so effortless we don't have to try and pull for revelation or knowledge is, is around us i mean the jewish mystics teach this that the light of wisdom shining everywhere all the time but it's up to us whether we open the lid and let that light in you know to ex receive wisdom all we have to do is, is is open an open heart is a seeing heart we're powerful in this we can choose how much of it we want what kind of life we want to live because love is not forced and it's not meant to be forced because it's meant to be fun the the fundamental purpose of creation is play it was made by a divine play so even when we do sports we do recreation recreation when we're playing we're creating we play music we don't work music we play music because play song and dance and joy is the most serious business of heaven, C.S. Lewis said. That's why we exist. And if we can tap into that and follow joy, not fear, follow joy, you will always increase and always find joy. Even if it's a small thing or a big thing, it won't matter because you'll live in that reality, that realm of joy. Creating music like you do, Truth Seeker, is just so much joy on it. That's the divine dance outworking itself. So even the people on this call, they don't have to strive or reach for something. Even Paul said that because God's not far from any one of us. In fact, in him, we live and move and have our being. It's tap into the energy of your true, authentic joy. What brings you joy? Sports, music, graffiti. You know, there could be joy-filled graffiti that is an art form. You tap into that. That's the divine playing with you, wisdom playing with you. And you'll have new ideas of combining aerosols and ideas and landscapes. And you might end up being paid by the government to do it and train people. It's already there. What we do is we have to stop resisting it. We have to say, I'm not going to resist love anymore. I'm just going to let love. And this is what happened for me. I said, right, God is love. I put a target on my chest. I say, God, hit me. Hit me with love bombs. Hit me with the full force of love and give it your best shot. That's what I said. And I literally spent years of my life intoxicated because I kept positioning myself for love bombs. And those lo that love would jump on people. I'd go out on the streets and people get hit by it. I'd go into a cafe or Starbucks. I remember one time we went into Starbucks. Everyone in the, the restaurant, in the coffee shop, got hit by the joy. They were all laughing and saying, what is this? And we were just going, it's Jesus, it's heaven. And there were these young people there drinking coffee. And when we went over to talk to them, they got hit by this. And they had like all this signs of wonder started happening. They had all this gold dust appearing on their hands, all of them. And we started to know who they were, their names and their ages. And that's the realm of joy. We didn't go into Starbucks on an evangelistic mission to try and prove anything. We went because we enjoy coffee. <laughs> and when you live in the joy realm, yes. when you live in the joy realm, yeah. you live in the overflow. Mm. You live in co-creation, in play and in dance and in wonder. And it's not a works machine. It's not a works project. It's a slow unfolding of divine ecstasy working its way out through all of humanity. And when we tap into that, everything is sacred. Everything is sacred space. Everything has beauty on it. Tattoo artists can have an, a, a call to express divine beauty in the way that they, you know, a, a tattooed. You know, the Lord has a tattoo. <laughs> it says that our names are tattooed on his on his hand and he says on his on his thigh he has his name on him you know so when we start to connect with that it's like even gardening why did jesus appear as a gardener after the resurrection because he was saying i'm restoring us to eden which means pleasure i'm restoring us to the garden of pleasure i'm restoring you to being a gardener if you spent your life as a gardener that would be the divine dance outplaying in you because it's just at the beginning and you will you'll get revelation the trees will speak to you the plants that's what scripture says it says listen to the animals listen to the trees they will teach you they will increase your bliss they will increase your wisdom and joy you'll learn the wisdom of the, the trees they have a wisdom cultivation animals and what you find is 
I'm, I'm actually living in the burning layers of love constantly. Everywhere around me is I am breathing Christological air. I am infused with God. I am filled with God. He fills everything. Like Isaiah chapter six says, the whole earth is filled with his glory. You know, I know some Christians that are afraid to go into places like mosques or other religions or Buddhist temples because they're afraid. I see it as being filled with the glory. The whole earth is filled with the glory. Where can I go from this love? Where can I go from the frequency of life? Where can I go from hope, faith? All that is noble, all that is true is echoing and resonating through every particle of our bodies and every breath that we're breathing. Now, when you see the world through that lens, that's a Christ-soaked lens. That is a glorious lens. That is that is the ecology of heaven. Mm. You see, the kingdom is at hand. The kingdom is here, here right now. And then it just is beauty unfolding. It's beauty and ecstasy and dance and play and wonder. And that's where we're coming back to as a species. We are a species birth from Eden, pleasure. We are made for joy. We are made for joy. And he is the happy God. He is in his presence, it says, is total celebration. It's a rave. God's presence is a rave. It's the, it's the ultimate dance floor. You know, the throne isn't like they for to scare people. It's the ultimate dance floor, you know, where he's expressing facets of this wonder constantly. And they're all in ecstasy. And that is what's within us. Heaven is within you. The dance floor is within you. The, 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 the dance floor, the throne is within you. You are in it. You are in him, in the throne, on the throne, in Christ. And he is in you. And you are all participating. Now, when you see this, you see that the universe is created for inclusion. It's in created out of a song that the, the heavens shouted and sang for joy, the star songs, the, the frequency of song. And you see it's actually a musical. We're in a, this cosmic, beautiful, beautiful musical. And all you've got to do is tune into your song, tune into your sound, tune into the sound that you were created with, which is already in you. You just have to awaken to the wonder of it and let it out. Everything um, that you just mentioned, the animals and the birds and um, the trees and all of this, they're, they're doing what they were created to do. Uh, they, they're, they're programmed in their DNA to do it and they do it well. And really that's all they do. The birds get up at a certain time every morning and they go get their food and they, they don't worry about anything and they love God and they, this is what it's in their DNA. And so what's in your DNA is that too, that what were you put here to do? What were you put here to do? It's in you. Most of us have given up on it. it well, it was in us when we were a kid, you know, we have these dreams and what I would love to do. And then life happens and then you know, the dreams fade away and people take your dreams from you and people correct you. Hey, get your head out of the clouds. You need to, uh, that's not going to pay the bills, you know, and these things. And we kind of, we, 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 we do like, um, Esau, we, we, we give our birthright away. We, we, we sell our dream for a nine to five. And now we're, we're the only being, the only species on the planet that's now doing something outside of what it was made to do. Like you were made to be loved. But you got, while you're here, there's some things that it's in your scroll that you signed up for. Um, and you're the only one not doing it. In Christ, it's going back to that blissful place in the garden of where you were before you came here. Christ is the reversal of any curse. He is the second Adam that, that made things right. It's, it's, it's in your mind. It's, you don't really see it yet. And trust me, guys, it's a process. It is a process. And there's instant... 70 year downloads but it's also a process of walking that out you know um what were you here to do what do you want to do what was your dream and your desire as a kid like to relive that to re remember recapture the dream that's why the book the alchemist is so powerful recapturing your dream go and get it and 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 don't forget it um and when you mentioned tattooing i don't know if you've heard my my me talk about this or anything but um, part of me stepping into what I'm doing, living my dream, living my bliss, wake, getting to wake up and 
love life. You know, it's, it's getting into that bliss. What, what I, I was created to do, to make music. I was created to do podcasts and be in bliss. This is part of why I'm here and I'm doing it. Um, but I wasn't, I was a truck driver uh, and I would work long hours and there was, I'm in Christ, but there's a part of me is this, it hasn't caught up yet. We don't, there's a gulf in between. I don't know how to get it over here. Do I give up on the dream? You know, do, do I work harder and try to make it happen? You know, it wasn't until I, I, I let go and quit striving, shed tears over it, gave it to the Lord. Then did he bring everything full circle and gave it freely. Now that you're done of trying to make it happen, I got you. I got you. Walk into it. You ain't got to kick the door down. I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. But your desires have to change. They have to be renewed. You wanted it to be seen. You want it to be seen. Now you want to do it because many people will be set free. You know that there's healing in, 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 in your voice. You're articulate. You, you're protective. You know, like we got to, that's the fire. That's the process of birthing whatever's what's put here. It has to be refined in the fire. Thank God that I wasn't given a, a larger platform when I was bitter. Thank God, because I would have, I would have blown it really quick. He knows what he's doing. I would have cursed everybody out as a Christian. You know, I, I would have been calling pastors out and I would have all kinds of things that I did when I was young in the faith. But mentioning tattoos, you know, I, I remember um, going to the tattoo shop to get work, artwork done. And I would see the atmosphere in the tattoo shop. Like these guys are making great money. I know I'm there for an hour or two and this guy made 300 bucks. And then I tipped them another. Like I, I know what they make. They make great money, like great money. To show up in a, in a lighthearted atmosphere to do what they love to do, which is draw. To, to create something that doesn't exist, an image, a picture, and to draw. And I remember my feeling of like, because I know tomorrow I got to go back to work at a job that I hate, at a job that I loathe. And just the, the thought of what if I could wake up and do what I love for a living, like on earth? Like what, what if I could wake up and talk to people like Justin Abraham and, 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 and hang out with my friends on a call. Listen, I, these podcasts come out of that. Me as that truck driver going on three-way calls, eight-way calls with a bunch of people talking about the Lord, praying for one another, sharing deep mysteries that we're studying. Hey, we got to record these years ago, years ago. He's preparing you. He's preparing you to hold the truth in righteousness. But I would see those people as tattoo artists or other podcasters that get to like Joe Rogan or somebody. Wouldn't it be cool to be able to talk, do this for a living? And the moment I gave it up was the moment that as far as I gave it up, as far as like I gave it to the Lord and I quit trying was the moment that he gave it back. He polished it and gave it right back. Here you go. But it's funny because right when you said tattoos, like I was wanting to share that tattoo story and then you're like, and you made it for me and for those listening <laughs> and the tattoos, <laughs> the Beautiful. art, the awe, the childlike enjoyment. Well, if you're, if you're in a, a valley of dry bones, like wherever you are right now, you're not really there. It's, it's a veil. It's a, it's a mirage. Find something to enjoy. Because then that enjoyment is a portal to a place of remembrance of who you were and why you're here. You're not here to be hanging out around the tombs and cutting yourself like the madman was in, in the scriptures. You're here to be set free, to be in your right mind and to do what you were created to do. And where it's all something a little bit different, but you know it. It's your dream, it's your vision. When that, what, what do you say to those people? I mean, that's powerful, you know, of... Uh, finding something to be grateful for. That's why I love breath work. Cause in the moment I can immediately take a breath. Man, thank you for that breath, Lord. That's so much going on, you know, and, but hey, we can all, that's, that's infinite possibility. That's I'm not done with you yet. Take a breath. 
As long as there's breath here, man, there's infinite potential. As long as my heart's still beating? Yeah. Okay. Infinite potential. Thank you. Thank you. And you find the smallest thing. I got so much to be thankful for. But though always making it simple, finding something in the valley of decision, being grateful. I'm grateful for my breath. Little things. The birds. I, I love the birds, man. We I go out there and feed the birds. I make sure they got food. I hang out with them, me and my wife, and we just sit back and enjoy the birds. And it's so much so that it, it opens up a portal. Do yeah. You, do you remember before the fall when, like you said, that they would commune with the birds? Like, a, do, you, do you think about it? Is it a place of contemplation? It happened when they weren't scared of you. So my contemplation, how can I, how can I get to a place of vibrational frequency where coming out of me is no threat? I'm your friend. <sighs> Such is God. There's no threat. Beautiful. There's no threat. I'm a friend. Mm, remember, remember, remember. So good. It's beautiful. Simple, good, man. Simple, right? Yeah. Amen. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. So many beautiful comments here in the chat. Make sure y'all share this out. Somebody who needs to see it, needs to hear it, needs to experience it. And for you, anytime that you want to tap into any of that, you can go back and re-listen. Technology is to remember this recording, this loop. Pull it back up again two years later. It's infinite. It's a wellspring of life. It's, there's an infinite. It's, there's no, it doesn't get cut off. You can tap into it at any moment. Most beautiful thing. Um, if people want to check you out man if uh, where's the best place to go is it a website is it social media where's the best place for people to link in with with you and your ministry and, and what you're doing yeah well if you look me up on youtube justin paul abraham you'll find me there uh we're on patreon justin paul abraham again and company of burning hearts is the name of our podcast it's on apple spotify it's all over the place. There's, we've been doing it for a long time, so they should find it. It's pretty simple. And I've got a book out there if you want to read more about the new creation life and the wonder. I've got a book. I've got it here, Beyond Human. If anybody wants to tap into that, that's on Amazon. And uh, it's a good starting place. And there's a, there's a lot of joy on it. It, it, will, it, will, it will open people up to mystery and joy they'll enjoy it. and I, I cover topics in here that you don't normally like in your book too truth seekers like this permission to talk about this stuff so i talk about telepathy i talk about ascension i talk about remote sight because it's all completely biblical yes it's what the saints have already done it's not new age or weird or anything else it's not some kind of cultish thing it is 101 this is what we do as a species we're actually fighting who we really are we are a telepathic species by design because the trinity's telepathic they knew their thoughts they know each other's thoughts you know the thoughts i think towards you parents know the thoughts of their children people know the farmers know the thoughts of their animals it's something we scientifically do you can measure it um mm. so all these things i see them as natural science i see it as natural spiritual science i believe it's just the way we're made and if we return to who we really are, we will just live the fullest life possible. Like Jesus said, John 10, 10, I came that you might have enjoy life to the full, till it overflows. He didn't come and say, I just want to give you an upgrade. He, want, he said, I'm coming for overflow here. And the word there is superfluous, the root word means, which means it's over the top. You, you had too much, too much life. And I think that's where we've got to come back to where the life coming off us actually affects everything it, it affects our brains yeah. it affects our dna it affects our families it affects nature the stars and galaxies everything is waiting according to scripture for us to realize and awaken to the freedom the freedom that we have in this wonderful unfolding of life and uh, that's what god's heart is for us you know and, and i'm all in and I'm not in a rush. I'll just do little acts of kindness, continue to meditate, continue to do what I see I'm supposed to do. And if I go quiet, I'm fine with that. 
because I still see that as all inclusion. You know, I'm not striving for a platform or conferences or anything. I'm unfolding the beauty of love. Mm. And love is what it's all about. Love in each other, loving your life, loving your family, loving creation, loving God, loving everyone that you can love and making your life more joyful. So looking at your life and thinking, how can I increase the joy? Like we just put this cool wallpaper up in our hallway. It's like these crazy wildflowers with butterflies, this crazy piece of artwork. <laughs> that brings us joy. Yeah. So do things for joy yeah. because the more joy you have in your life, I've been doing arts the last couple of days just for joy. I could have been reading, studying, doing a million things, but the joy was on artwork. So if we discover that for some people, the joy is on cooking, whatever, find that thing, creating clothing, tap into your joy, do the thing that brings you joy and you will naturally unfold all of these things without even working it out. Like you did, you know, Truth Seeker, where you, you wanted to do podcasts for the joy. You thought I really would love to do that. <laughs> and you've, you've ended up doing it, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So yeah, thanks for having me on the on board if people have got questions maybe next time we can tackle actual questions about stuff or whatever else if, if i if you want me back sometime we can do that yeah yeah for sure man always dude this is the, these are the the conversations that uh, to be honest with you i do the other ones for i do those other conversations um to go catch people and you're looking for truth you're looking for truth well we're gonna let you experience it I can tell you truth. We've been telling you truth. The pastors have been telling you truth. It just it doesn't re register, resonate. But when you get to meet the truth, when you get to tap into the truth as a person, whew, I, nothing mm -hmm. that anyone says matters because you know him. There's a place of authority. You don't have to tell me about who Jesus was. And he wasn't that. What you guys are saying, he was not. Wait, wait, wait. I know him. I know, That's I know right. him. You can't, <laughs> at least from that that aspect, I know him. You know, so that's what we want yeah. as a, um, a demonstration of love, a demonstration of of Christ and of peace. And I believe that's what we all experience today. I totally did, totally did. Uh, Justin, man, thanks so much for for coming on. It means the world. Good to finally connect, bro. So good. Beautiful. We'll do it. Thanks again. for having me. Man. All right, yeah. Brother. Many blessings. Take care. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll do it again. Mm -hmm. Amen and amen. Listen, man, this is what it's about, man. The anointing, the beauty, the love, the peace, all of it. Everything has its place. Everything fits perfectly. And uh, and this is this is this is it. This is I, what I do. Love it, love it, love it. Um, honor Justin so much, man. Um, listen to and, and, and drop in as, to as many teachings as I can when I when I feel led. I'm all over the place. You guys know that. Um, but when I can, just to get that love, get hear those stories and a, and a person of honor, a person who's going to, I can tell you my story. We want to know his stories like, but I can tell you my story in another story, which is, again, the, we talk about the saints. He mentioned the saints and and what they experienced and what they encountered and what I experienced was maybe articulated better in what they said in that book or whatever. I mean, same thing is the is the scriptures, right? You read the, the story of, of David, you read all of these stories in the scripture. And then you feel like you are him. Wow, man, I feel like I'm David, man. I feel like I'm up against all odds, man. I feel like I'm looking my giant dead in the face. I feel like Everyone, all my people have given up and they're scared of, of the future. They're scared of what's coming. They're scared of what's here. Hold on, let me look it dead in the face and take it on. I, I wanna, I'm David. I feel like David. I feel like Thomas, one of, my, one of the most beautiful people in the, in the Bible for me as far as who I totally resonate with. I want, you gotta show me, man. Don't tell me. That's what I just said. We can preach truth all day. The preaching of the cross is foolishness. Preach the word. Let's cool, cool. I want to see it. Why do you preach one thing and you say one thing, but you do another? You say you love me, but you treat me like you don't. It's a, That compliment you just gave me was like a 
it was a backhanded compliment. Like, I want to experience it. It needs to come out of you. Like when you talk, I want to experience it. When you draw, when you paint, when you tattoo, I want to experience it. Whatever you do, the Bible says, do it for the glory of God. And in that glory, there's love, there's peace. There's everything that Christ represents. Long suffering, read, read the fruits of the spirit. Whatever the fruits of the Holy Spirit are, are in that love. Perfect love, cast out all fear. So good to be able to experience that, tap in with that and honor that within many different people. You know, you know we talk about the Catholic saints or whatever, right? And there's a reason why I talk about them um, because I've always talked about them, but I didn't know their story. I say Catholic saints, Catholics. The very thing that uh, you persecuted, the very thing that you said God would never use or God will never do, um, he's hidden a piece of himself there. What good can come out of Nazareth? Jesus of Nazareth, that's where the Messiah is coming. What good can come out of Nazareth? Okay, because that's the consensus of the people. That's what y'all believe. I'm going to show you how. I'm not going to tell you how. I've been telling you how. It's been there. It's just going over your head. Let me show you how goodness is coming out of Nazareth through the person of Jesus Christ. What good can come out of Catholicism? Do you know how much evil they've done? Do you know about the Crusades and about the wars and about the deception? Do you know what's happening in the Catholic Church right now? I mean, right now. Do you know? Listen, get out of here. I don't know nothing about that. What I do know is that people whose hearts were touched by God in the early century that existed and they carried a piece of the heart of God that they've tapped in. They've given their life over to this one thing. Hold on, you pray every Saturday and Sunday. Teresa of Avila. Listen, it's a requirement for those guys to pray eight hours a day. You pray every Tuesday and Thursday. They pray, don't talk to me about prayer. I want to talk to her about prayer. I want to read her story. What happened when you did that for eight hours? Wow, wow, wow. Does it mean that I have to pray eight hours a day? No, but it means I can maybe pray for 10 minutes a day, an hour a day. Like what's what's possible? We juggle so much and, and even those guys would would say that, you know, us that, that, that held down families and, and regular jobs, like we, you know, have it harder and, and, but there's a, there's an anointing on it when you break through and you do it anyway because there's excuses. I'm tired, man. My mind ain't working right. I'm just so, I'm exhausted. I can't pray. You know how many people speak with this excuse of this, um, I can't, I don't understand the Bible. And they say it. They keep saying, I don't understand it, you know, so I don't, I don't read it because I don't understand it. Um, and that's what they experience. They don't understand it. Try to understand it. Try to read. Try to tap in. T draw nigh unto God. Take a step towards God. Take a step towards it. Experience. And you'll find something beautiful in all of it. Um, I, I, I totally um, publicly have... It's been a long time ago. Most of that... I deleted most of that kind of stuff. and uh, But I was very outspoken against... Babylon. It's in some of my music for sure. Old stuff, uh, you know, Babylon and um, got, you know, the mixing of the night, the, the Council of Nicaea, Constantine, bro, all that kind of, well, a lot of people go through that, right? It's a phase. It's a, it's a learning, but you, you persecute something and then it comes back around to bless you. No, it doesn't, Truth Seeker. Hold on. Do you, have you heard the, you haven't learned from Paul the Apostle? who was persecuting the saints and killing them daily, persecuting followers who would come in the name of the Lord, who would show up in the name of the Lord, who operated in the name of Jesus. And he, was, he made it his goal to persecute those people, to attack those people. But then the very thing that he was attacking showed compassion. Jesus met him. You know, he was in this place of traveling in between from one place to another. Jesus shows up and appears to him in spirit form as a light, knocks him off of his horse and blinds him. Paul, Paul, 
or Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you doing this? <gasps> it's the real one. It's the real Messiah. I got to see you for who you truly are. Not with the who they said you are or who I thought you were, but for who you really are. That's the thing he was persecuting came back to bless him. The idea of being enemies of God in, in our mind and being sinners and committing sin. You're attacking, you're doing things, you're lashing out because you don't know who you are. You're doing things. And the very thing that which you're persecuting, the very thing that which you're attacking, Jesus, God, comes full circle to bless you, to find you where you are. That happened to me. Catholicism, I got to say what it is, and it became what I said it was. Right now, I can declare what it is, and it becomes that. To me, some of that will sprinkle to you as a seed if it, if it uh, changes the way you think. Um, whatever. But to me, it was the new world order, Babylonian. It was, it was a mixture of paganism and Christianity. It's a mixture, brother. Like I totally, I did some weird stuff um, when I found out that that that, that happened. Um, and it wasn't fun to be around me. But there's levels to it. And even as I quit attacking the things that I was against. They're still maybe in my heart or yeah, you can't, God can't use those people. They're just more like Catholics are more like, like ritualistic. Like they, they're not spiritual. They just kind of like have this like outer like symbols and stuff. They draw pictures and which is, which is idolatry, right? Um, you know, make the, the, the likeness of nothing on heaven and on, on earth. And, um, you have all these things in your head. You got to work through what you, what they are what you said they are, which is probably what somebody told you they are. That's why I said there's power there. Somebody told you that. What do you mean? I came up with that on my own. Guys, what did God say to, to Adam and Eve? Who told you that? Wait, wait a minute. Who, who told you that? The serpent told us. Oh, someone told. That's not who you are. If you eat of it, you, I'm scared you'll be like me. Hold on. You're in my image and likeness already. Why are you trying to cover up? I already love you. I'm not going to love you. I already do. The very thing that you're running from, the very thing that you're persecuting will come back to bless you. So choose your battles wisely. You know, I would do that to the Catholic, Catholic stuff. And even, like I said, even as I'm not persecuting, just in my head, they can't hear from God. Not like us. Um until something happened maybe something justin abraham said of for sure he planted a seed for sure him and uh john crowder and other people who would just mention their names and i'm like oh i don't know much about that but then i would hear stuff and then whatever it was one thing led to another and they were ready for i, w I was ready i say they were ready no i was ready to uh to hear their song to know them to say hello and um studied a little bit of St. Teresa of Avila because I, I it was just in doing a a friend of mine shared something shout out to Chris Horton love you bro he shared something and it was about ecstasy religious ecstasy and I was like oh yeah I know what that is and it had her story there oh let me look into a little bit of this myself and when I did I was immersed in in her story, which was so similar to my story, the very thing that I was persecuting was just so similar, and she articulated it very well. I have a video on St. Teresa of Avila, how she was stabbed in the heart by an angel with a, with a spear that was on fire. A, a seraphim came to her and got her in her heart and it hurt, ah! But it was so beautiful. It was a hurt, but it was healing. It was how broken God is for the cosmos, but how much he loves it at the same time. I've experienced that. I have. I have. And to read her story and be like, man, that's so cool. So now we're, me and Teresa, hey, man, this saint, she, she experienced something very beautiful. And it's, it's, I talked to my friends who were there with me when I experienced it. Remember that? This saint, man, check her story out. She, she experienced it. She had a bunch of experiences, little, little, beings or little angels popping up to her and bringing messages and but it was through a life of prayer and, and something that she carried that unlocked that that experience 
So I begin to honor her and read her story and I begin to experience even more. Chris Horton, he remembers that. There you go. Um, and then it, well, if she's an, another one. I, I would listen to stuff. I would watch YouTube videos. I would immerse myself in it. And I hear they did mention other saints and other things. And I, well, let me look into their story because that sounds that sounds cool too. And then I'd find other patron saints, uh, Saint Anthony of Egypt, that 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 carried something amazing that sounded so much like something I experienced. So there was some, um, what do you call it? There was some um, some balance there, some resonance there. I resonated with, with his story. It was so much like mine and he lived hundreds of years before me. You know, so I begin to honor that, meditate upon that, think about it. And then my, my heart began to open a little more and um, and then other saints man so many so many so many of what they carried and what they did and begin to honor that and then I met a led me to a Catholic um, bookstore in in um, Louisiana going to visit my mother so we was all in there I thought it was just a Christian bookstore we go in there but there's a lot of Catholics there and so um, I go in there and I'm do you have anything on Saint Teresa do you have a do you have a an icon of her it's what they call these icons you have an icon of St. Teresa? I just, I really want one. Her story resonates with me. And it's this lady in there and she's just so meek. And uh, I'm like, yeah, I've just been studying her story, man. And it's so cool and yada, yada. She's like, oh yeah. And she's like telling me about these other saints and stuff and showing me their stories and cool stuff. And and I'm, I'm new to it. And we're talking and she's like enamored. She's, she's um, astonished when she's talking to me just to, because where my heart was at, right? Um, but she's talking to me as another Catholic. Like she thinks I'm a Catholic just because there's resonance there. And I, and because I came in to get a, an icon or a picture of a, of a saint. So you gotta be Catholic, right? You can't be a new ager and do that. You can't be a Protestant Christian and do that. I came in there and got those and she's like, oh yeah. And then she would be, you talk about Christians a little bit and how they, you know, I said, well, how, you know, how do they, do they buy any of this stuff? Do the, Christ, the regular, like, Protestant Christians around here, do they? No. She said they come in here and mock us. The Christians come in here and say, we're worshiping saints. The Christians come in here and do this and do that. So I didn't even, I didn't want to tell her I was a Christian. Like, I'm, I'm not a Catholic. Like, I was like, oh, because I, not because I was scared, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to take that away from her, you know, that I'm one I'm one of you. Right now I am, while we're having this conversation in this moment, we're connecting. I am a Catholic. I am a brother, a sister, right? But I eventually told her, she was like, oh, she was like shocked, but she was like happy. And I was like, oh yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people coming around. There's a lot of regular Christians coming around and there, there is, those walls are falling. Those walls are being kicked down, just like Samson destroyed the, the walls of that temple, that box that shouldn't have been there. The box is being destroyed and what's in it is being released. And guess what? That which is beautiful. If there's any truth, if there's any truth in any of them, any, any new ager that I interview, whoever, if there's any truth in them, let it speak according to this word the word of truth like what is the arrogance that a, that a person is a hundred percent deceived because of association guilty by association yeah so but in our head they are because i i would not, never look up saint Teresa. i would never look up saint anthony and um so saint francis who now i have a statue in in my backyard would, he had a connection with the birds like he would literally preach to the birds and they would come up to him he would communicate with the animals and they were his friends and then for my birds I was like you know what I want to I want to carry what he had I want to be friends with the birds let me lean into that a little bit but the very thing that I was persecuting speaking all manner of evil against 
was the very thing that God would use to reveal a part of himself to me that was hidden in the hardness of my heart or the uh, preconceived notion to judge a thing before it's appointed time to say what it really is. We've all done that. We all do that. Um, God has hidden him, a piece of himself in everything and everyone. It all plays a part. Everything. That That's why I, I even mentioning a new ager i don't even like using that term because christians use that as a as a dig word as a curse word true seekers new age you know he's, he's into new age you know i know so i'll try to redeem redeem it because jesus says I'll, I'll be with you to the end of end of the earth and into the end of the age until the new age comes i will be with you i will never leave you the things that we've demonized the things that we've pronounced judgment on that it was before it's a point in time Jesus looking at come on man not even just Jesus looking at the the sick people I don't even like calling them sick people that's not who they are Jesus looking at Mary Magdalene in her confusion when she received a false identity, didn't know who she was. I didn't know who I was. Thank you for say, saying that. Thank you for bringing that out of me. Him seeing her in that and had the long suffering and the and compassion and the love enough to stay, to tarry, to hang out a little bit, to be a bridge, to bring her out of that. What if he would have, um, you know, the Lord says that this and this, and I'm going to tell you what the word of God says. And when you repent, we'll deal righteously with you. Uh, that was me. But he met her where she was. And he met the drunkards where they were. And he met the paraplegic where he was. The paraplegic literally couldn't go to where he was. So let me come down and make myself available and come to where you are. For where you are, there I will be also. Let me come down to you. Find you where you are right now to be a bridge the beauty of Christ man the simplicity he made it simple super simple super simple but the thing that you're persecuting the thing that you're fighting against God has hidden the people I can give you examples upon examples upon examples um, of looking at different things and redeeming them um, breath work to see the righteous real because God created everything and called it good so anything outside of that that you've given away to a negative force is only something that you've called outside or it's been used outside of the way it was intended to use. You're using it for the wrong reasons. Listen, I want you to prophesy, but you're, you're prophesying out of hatred, man. You're prophesying out of anger. There is power when you speak. So watch what you say. Anger is coming out. Jud the judgment of God. Until you know that your words are alive, everything comes full circle to meet you where you are. Hence the story of Jonah and Nineveh. How, you're going to judge these people. No, I forgave them. Tell them I'm good. I'm cool with them now. You shouldn't be. You should still be angry for what they did to me and to your servants. No, tell them it's cool. Tell them I'll forgive them because they've, they've repented. No, I'm not telling them that. I'm going to tell them they're judged. Okay. Now you're running from God. Because you looked at something and didn't call it as the way, you didn't see it the way God sees it. You, you looked at, I mean, again, I, the epiphany there is Jesus with the, not with the demon possessed man, but with the actual demons. Jesus casting these demons out of the gathering filled with all these demons or whichever one it was several times but and they said no did you come to torment us before the appointed time did you come to judge us it's not time yet no it's not show compassion on us please son of son of adam son of david have compassion on us son of god son of man have compassion on us okay even you need a little compassion send us into the pigs that we may go okay the thing that's attacking you and you turn around and have compassion on you know even I talk about Bob Larson you know 
my interview with him um, on his show. It wasn't an interview. He attacked me. I stayed in bless mode. Man, look, I appreciate everything you brought to the table, man, that you can, you're still bringing. I didn't even, that's even like a, a slap. That's, that's a slap compliment. I appreciate what you brought to the table because I don't really don't like the things you're bringing to the table. That's my truth. I didn't have, listen, I appreciate everything that you brought and everything that you continue to bring because just because it ain't helping me don't mean it ain't helping somebody else. And I glory in that because it's the bigger picture. Somebody shared a, a meme on, uh, on one of my comments on Facebook. Um, and it was, a, it, was, it was making fun of Christians, baby Christians. And he's like, it's a picture of a little kid, a baby at a table crying, eh, big old face crying. And there was a big old piece of steak in front of him. And he said, these Christians don't want steak. They only want milk. And he po posted it there. It was like a slap in the face of the Christians who won't get into the mystical stuff, man. Get into the, the mystical, man. Get into some truth seeker, man. Some Justin Abraham, man. Some some mystical stuff, man. Because I love it, man. God's here, man. This is where God's at, man. This is where he's at. And so we have, we, you know, religious people, Catholics, whoever. Whoever you put in that box. I'm going to step on the box right now. The reason I kind of took offense with that. I didn't take offense. I just like, come on, man. That's not true. And I responded. You're crying because the baby's crying because it wants milk and you're trying to give it steak to eat. That baby don't have teeth. That baby needs milk to grow in its infancy. It needs milk right now. That baby does not need, so why would you get onto the baby for crying? Babies are gonna cry. They don't know how to articulate how they feel. Many religious people lash out. It's called fight or flight. They've, they've not only given their life to this, but they've given their eternity to this. The idea of eternal torment, punishment, hell, whatever. So if you take any of that away to an unlearned person or a person who's not a person of understanding, they're going to lash out. They're going to call you names. They're going to do things that's outside of their, your character and really outside of theirs. So, But when they do that, what did you share with them? Are you trying to give them steak? And the steak wasn't even cooked. Me and my wife might get into that. Got a cookie steak. No. Why would you get onto the, the baby for crying and lashing out when you're trying to give it steak that it's not ready to eat? It couldn't eat it. It would choke on it. Even if you gave it a knife and a fork, you gave the baby a knife and a fork so it can cut its own steak? No, come on. That's on you. That's on me for broadcasting, for, proje for projecting and expecting um, someone to, to do something that they weren't ready to do. It wasn't, in the, it wasn't their time. When it's full time, that baby's gonna taste steak for the first time. It's gotta grow teeth, it's gotta, first it's gotta cut its teeth. It's gotta, you gotta give it a, chew, a toy. The baby's teething and it even hurts when their teeth are growing. Growth hurts, there's birth pains, there's there's growth pains there's like in your legs, restless legs. Like my daughter used to lay in bed and cry when her, she could feel her legs growing. There was that pain that kids get. It's not an easy process, it's not fun. So there's, there is crying there. So to be patient, so it's on you who are learned to restore, to bring balance. To those who aren't ready, whether you want to teach it from your platform or from your discussion or from your DM or from your comment section on whoever's page, whether you wanted to show love there or maybe point them to somebody who can sprinkle a little bit. That was if even me and Justin before we went live, it's like, you know, we want to we want to make sure that we're, you know, careful on what we share and what we say, you know, and I don't. I, I don't really, you know, ever feel the need to hold back or anything, um, but there's definitely wisdom in that, you know, at times, depending on your audience. I'll say that. That's the wisdom I hold back on, or try to, depending on the audience. 
Kirby, one of the most beautiful Christian mystics that I know, somebody that I look up to, that I'm partnered with. Um, I, uh, I, I honor him and, and he says that he likes to just kind of show up and not have a, even though he's been studying, he has things he wants to talk about, those kind of things. Let me just see where the people are. So just to listen or to let somebody ask a question to see where people are just to know, okay, this is where we're going. This is where we're going. Level six. Okay, great. Six. His levels were six. His was six. Cause I know what it takes to get to level seven. I may share a little bit of level eight, but you're not finna skip a level. You're on level six. Listen, seven is this get ready because on the ground floor floor of level seven is right beyond the ceiling of six. It's a, these are levels in the spirit. These are levels that you're being taught on. And, and there's so much wisdom in that, you know, and I, I try to do that. But um, expecting people, projecting on people. And I love to see, I love to see how they respond. Because I get weird, like, inbox stuff. Of, you got to watch this video, man. This is where I'm coming. And I'm like, I'm not going to watch that, sir. I don't want to watch that. I'm not watching it. Usually if it's something like super polarizing, like judging somebody or some fear articles and stuff, I'm not watching that. I'm not watching that. You need to inform yourself. It was on the news. No, I'm not watching that. And then I see how they, well, I'll never share it again. I'll never share anything with you. No, 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 I just, I'm not watching that. I'm, I'm, I guard my heart, my mind, my eye gates. I'm not watching that because that'll get in my spirit and I begin to think about it. I begin to contemplate on it. And unless you come in with some, some solutions, I ain't really trying to hear about that. You know, people, random people on the internet who feel they have the power um, to speak into your life and to correct you, to correct you. You know, I had that, I gotta just go full circle with it. You know, you get random people, um, who watch one one aspect you know of you or what you represent because i said justin what do you do who are you what do you do he's like if jesus did it i did it like i'm doing it this is my mission so just to say well um you know i'm a i'm an influencer i'm a social media guy i i'm a minister i'm a prophet i'm a preacher i'm a priest unto my hand i'm a husband like okay what aspect do you want to know of what i do for, for where we are you know so people watch a video and uh, comment or want to correct you. Maybe get in your inbox and want to correct you. And listen, we're open to correction. You got it. We don't. I don't have nothing figured out. I know a lot. I know a lot, guys. I know a lot, a lot. But I know nothing. I'm, I know nothing. I'm not married to a lot. I'm not married to. I'm not married to knowledge. I'm. I'm married to Christ. And if it's in Him, I shall never be moved. If I'm married to an idea, if I'm married to a doctrine, that's that blows like the wind that's continually changing no I'm not married to that so yeah I, I am open for correction but to think that you know they random people on the internet just because they disagree with you and inbox you like want you to repent or want you to see see the see things the way that they see them and then it moves into attack you know I, I deal with that obviously if you got a platform if you're gonna get a platform if you're gonna be vocal a platform is just be vocal about your anything anything polarity the fires turned up politics get ready religion get ready best ice cream get ready you got you have contrarians that's the thing there's a lot of you know some of us are, are that to a degree but there, there's contrarians who are only there to tell you what they disagree with I don't respect, and it's in my head, like, but this is me, like, cause I know, cause it is me, literally. Um, if somebody is gonna do a video exposing somebody or something, like, I want that person to be able to um, do the same video, finding me, however many points you made to expose, find me a couple points of something they're doing right. Like you've trained yourself to see the bad. I mean, I guarantee you in this comment section, people who haven't even made it this far to this video, maybe not right now live, but maybe in the replays, 
you'll see comments. This is not of God. This is demons. You guys are playing with new age. Be careful. You'll see, you'll read all that. And they haven't watched the video. They, uh, same thing on any, any of uh, video. anything you put out, you're going to have contrarians. One guy, um, was commenting and just can give you all the stuff that he's against. Tell me what you're for, sir. Tell me what you're for. What am I doing right? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, okay. And it's guilty by association. Justin's going to get it. Justin's going to get it. Justin Abraham is going to get it. He's going to get uh, people in his inbox. He Listen, he's taking a risk. Justin is, is going to get... I hate, I, I don't want to prophesy this in creative. I'm just telling you guys what to expect. It come, this is, this is the, the season. This is where we are. He's going to get um, supporter. He's going to lose. He may lose support. I hate to say that. I do. I prophesy that whatever anyone takes away, that it's pressed down and given to you 10 times over. And let me do it. Let me give into your bosom over, above and beyond anything that you lose. He knows he's not going to lose. Whatever you lose, you gain. But there's people who have, they feel like they own you. Because they sow into you. Because they watch you every stream. You went on with True Seeker. Do you know? Do you know that True Seeker interviewed a Freemason? He did. He did. Yeah, but that doesn't mean True Seeker agrees with them. No, he does. He does. He, he, does. he agrees with everything they say. Because I watched the video and he was shaking his head. When they was talking, he was just nodding. Justin's going to get that. I can't believe I saw you at Truth Seeker. Just so you know this, uh, Laura C. got it. Even in open comments, not even like, I'm um, surely inboxes for sure, but open op people openly commented under the videos. I am withdrawing my funding to you, Laura. I was listening to your music and partnering with you, but not anymore because Truth Seeker's deceived and you partnered with him just to do an interview. What? That's weird. Guilty by association. Jesus, again, hanging out with people who were guilty in the eyes of men. Justin's going to get it. And you're going to get it. Guilty by association. Hanging out. You're for them. I don't agree. Listen, I got in. I say I got into it. I messaged my, my old pastor because I, I commented on something that I've been vocal about. Um, it's when we when we have to share a video, uh, let's just say, if Justin, let's just use him as an example. If he just, like, this video's done, he shares it on his page or he shares it with his, um, his audience, email list, whatever. And it says, hey, um, I just did this interview. I want you guys to check out. Now, I don't agree with, in it, with everything that Truth Seeker says. Now, I don't, I don't agree with, with everything he believes. I don't believe the saying he believes. I don't agree with everything. It's that here I'll share it but 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 I don't agree with everything that he said and so my pastor he um and I, I've had to I've searched had to search my own heart just on that and I'm just sharing it so other people may be able to tap lean into that just got to find some beauty in it um because it's a it is it is a dig a little bit um my pastor commented said true seek I love you man always loved you I know we don't I, I don't agree with everything but uh but, but we're still friends and so it's, it's like the very fact that you had to mention that we don't agree on everything. So I just commented, I said, well, who do you, is there anybody that you agree with everything on? Is there anybody like that you, have you found someone? That's, that's cool. Like I said, then I was like, now nah, I know you and you and your wife don't even agree on everything. You and your wife don't even agree on everything. So why did you have to say it? Well, every time you introduce your wife and we butt heads all the time, we don't agree on everything. You know, I think we should spend money on, on bills and she wants to go out to eat. Like, we don't agree on everything. Like, hold on, why is that an introduction to share something and make it be a blanket statement? The views and opinions expressed by True Seeker Podcast. Uh, I don't agree with everything. I don't agree with something, an interview he did two years ago. Okay, great. I'm glad you told us. We thought you did. Like, we thought you did. Wow. 
Why would you? Like, that's the church age thinking. That you, we can't be, I can't be seen with you because you, your view of the Trinity. I'm not even talking about far out stuff that we love. And I'm talking about basic principles and, oh, you believe Jesus was black. You believe he had dreadlocks. You know, the pictures of the, uh, the artistic rendering show him with, with short hair. You know, those people over there don't have dreads. Why would you, why would you show that? I can't be seen with you. There's no, there, I don't never find anyone that I agree with on everything. Now, we don't agree with everything, but he's still a good guy. That it is a, that is a double handed, um, sword, a double edged sword. And, um, it's a two way slap. Um, even if they don't mean it, they don't mean it really, but it does show out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Um, cause people do lump you in. So maybe they, they say that to, uh, to do what my old pastor used to call damage control. But they're gonna, people come and go, man. Jennifer in the comment says, I love all you represent, stay authentic. There you go. Love all you represent until the, that, until that, you know, there's always an until. Hold on to all things loosely. All things loosely. You know, people come and go. Man, I love you until you had truth seek on your platform, man. What, what were you thinking, man? I can't. You claim to hear the Holy Spirit, but you went on Truth Seekers podcast. Why would you do it? I can't believe that. And like the, these judgments of who or what Truth Seeker is or whoever you put out of Freemason that I interviewed like what is because yeah that you have a an imagination a judgment of what all of them are all Christians are this guard your heart I had to remind myself the other day you know there was a, a guy who um, inboxed me he's like an up and coming like um um, deliverance dude, deliverance minister, and uh, he's trying to get views and trying to grow his platform and stuff. And um, he messaged me and said, "Hey, bro, I'm gonna I'm gonna expose you tonight. I'm gonna expose you on my YouTube and um, everything that you you stand for is not of God, and I'm gonna expose it." I was like, oh, "Okay, well, uh, that's cool. Like, you gotta do what you gotta do, but why would you do that? Like, you know." There's, there's better ways to do it, you know, that idea. And so he messaged me. But I think the reason he messaged me was just because the scripture, an elder or somebody over him told him that um, you're supposed to go to them first. Go to them first. Do it. Handle it biblically. Go to them first. And if you can't work it out, then, okay, we can do, you can do it. I think that an elder, like, told him that. So he, th he thought, like, an Instagram um, inbox was, was going to me first, you know. Not to talk or reason, but to but to declare, hey, I'm fixing up. I just want you to know, I had to come to you first. It's like, okay, that's your interpretation of that scripture. Cool. Um, but anyway, he um, did it anyway. He made like um, images and flyers and promoted it. Tonight, we refute the false doctrines of truth seeker. Oh. Don't miss it, you know. He saw he was a fan of Bob Larson. He'd seen Bob Larson did it. Got good numbers. Got good numbers. So it's like, hey, if I do this, man, I can get good numbers. So let me refute this teacher. So I jumped on there and I watched it. And I was just in the comment section just after one of our hangouts on, on School of the Mystics here. And um I was like, hey, I don't believe that. Why would you say that? Well, there's this, that, that, that. I was like, hey, well, how about bring me on? Instead of talking about me, talk to me. Instead of talking about the Mason, talk to them. That's what this that's what this platform represents, and it's setting people free. Talk to somebody versus talking at them or about them. But I went on there. Hey, talk to me, man. What's happening? What you what you disagree with, bro? Like, what is this? What do you? Why don't you believe in this? And he said, Truthiger, is it not true that you kill? You kill animals and goats and and you smear the blood on your face for ritual. No, I don't. What are you talking about? 
What are you talking about, dude? Who do you think I am? What do you... How do you praise your God? How do you... I said, bro, I like to get quiet and put on some worship music and, and pray and just tell Jesus how beautiful he is. No, no, no. You don't. No, I, I do. That's It's that simple. That's what I do. No, you can't. It didn't compute in his head because of a preconceived notion of me killing goats and stuff and being like African voodoo or something. For some reason, that was his, in his mind. <laughs> I was like, bro, I don't do that. Well, do you do that? No, I don't do that. Why would you, and just other things. I'm just like, hey, you need to, that's not me. Whoever you think you think I am, I'm not that thing. You know, And but still that would have to be, I'm doing this video to correct you and you're a new ager and you can't, we both can't be right. I can't be right and you be right. Like in there, that's in their head. What about hell, brother? What is, you said that you didn't know if there was hell, brother. The Bible is clear on hell. It's, it's not really. It's very, it's definitely not clear on hell. Which hell? What do you mean? What do you mean? Which hell? No, no, no. Like which, like, cause I love words. Which hell? Like which, which part? Like, why don't you tell people they're going to hell? Cause I, I would never want to pronounce judgment on somebody if I don't know. Even if you do know, 100%, and that's your message, you're going to hell. Jesus, I said, bro, Jesus defeated the fear of death. Death is defeated. Jesus, I believe in hell. I believe in a holding place, but I believe it was, it was emptied. It, it was empty. It, it wasn't created for, for, for mankind, but for Satan and his, his angels. Like, the scripture says that, right? No, 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 no. What about this? What about this? What about that? I was like, well, uh. I can show you like scripturally why I believe that. No, 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 no. Why did you believe? Well, let me show you. I believe it because the Bible says it first. So let's. What about this? The place the Bible says the hell, continual torment, continual burning. It's a it's a place that that neither moth nor worm do sleep, and it's continual a perpetual fire. What about that? That's not a physical place, true seeker. I said no. It is. It is. It, it actually is. Can I show you? Because I got all my scriptures. Can I Can I show you? Like, I'll show you that it is an actual place. What? No, it's not. That is not an actual place. That is not. I said, no, it is a place on the earth that that's talking about. Like, can I show you? No. You're deceived. Wait, wait. I'm trying to show you. Like, I got the scriptures. I can show you. I don't know. I bind it. Uh, okay. Okay. This is what we're doing. Okay. So then it's like, just, I mean, it was, it was a lesson in it. It was a lesson in it, you know, of true seeker. Do you still care what people think about you? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. I'm a Christian. And a mystic. Christian mystic. Fully Christian. Fully mystic. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm learning. But obviously I care what people think or I wouldn't have joined that call. And so it was kind of like a, it was funny because I did it on my regular page so that when you go, you join a live with somebody on, on Facebook, it, it sends out uh, an alert to your followers. True Seeker is now live with so-and-so. Oh, wow. Cool. I can't wait. I love True Seeker stuff. Let's go see. <laughs> so I didn't do it with my page because it's got a lot more followers. Be honest, let me be transparent. So I did it with my regular page my regular name because it's going to send it I didn't it's going to tell people but not many people care on that one and then I joined and it sent the alert and all these people joined all these people joined I was like oh goodness like now they're here and this is what he wants numbers 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 I can't lose because if I lose this I'm in front of the people um so it was just really weird but but my, my whole motive of like caring what people that's what I took away from it of like just talking to the Lord like listen until you give up the and I know this trust me I know this but it, there's le there's levels and layers to caring what people think or who cares like it's not everybody friends family Christians like who do you care till you get to a place where listen I don't care this is who I am unapologetically me I don't need your approval, nor your opinion. I can try to share with you if you really want to learn, because I'm here to teach. I'm here to share. I want to show you how I started believing that, because it was biblical. Um, 
but I just had to check my heart, my spirit. And uh, it shook me up a little bit just cause I, I did feel like, um, you know, trying to reach a people or talk to a people that didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear it. And you could read the comments. They're making fun of me, telling me how deceived I am. I'm used to it. It doesn't feel good. It still doesn't feel good by any means when it's a bunch of people. This guy's deceived and they're like, you're the almost. You're the almost. That's what they feel about us. We're the almost, you know? I was like, no, 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 I'm a Christian. And they were saying things like, if Truth Seeker ever gets delivered, like fully delivered, he'll be a powerful man of God. He'll be a powerful man of God. But he doesn't want to lay, let his demons go yet. If he, if he gets delivered, he'll be a powerful man of God. I said, no, I've, I'm already delivered. Like I've I actually went through deliverance ministry and like I am delivered. I've, I've been healed from so. No, 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 no. When you do one day, when you let demons back in, you, you're deceived. You're, almost, almost. And I said, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna just be honest with this revelation, how I felt. And it's, this is even a disrespect for me to even say this, really. But I kind of felt like how many of the, my brothers and sisters who are in the LGBTQ community feel. I, I, I listen. I do not. I don't want to project it, but it was a little. That's how I felt. A portion in this, because I said we just want to be accepted. We just. We just want to be accepted. Like, we just want to be one of you. And when I typed that, I was like, who, who else has said that? Like, wow. <sighs> Open your heart for those people that have been overlooked, that have been judged, shown no compassion. I said, we, I said, we just want to, I, I just want to be accepted. I just want to know that I'm, I'm one of you. And they say, you are one of us. You are one, because you are a Christian. And they, they were like, some of them were still saying that I was a Christian, a just deceived Christian. A, a Christian that teaches false doctrine, a, t a Christian that's into new age. I said, we just want to be one of you. Oh, you are, you are. So then I'm like, let me come teach at your church. No, 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 no. See, I'm not. I'm becoming one of you if I repent if I get rid of this if I stop doing that that's not Jesus y'all you already are you're not becoming you already are whatever you need whatever's been given to you is already inside of you now there's levels of unlocking that and you knowing that trust me that's why we're here and that was the big one we just want to be accepted I want to be one of you and that opened so much why would I say that I've had conversations with those people Christians in the LGBTQ community and because I had those conversations hey I lost support for that too I did I'm not here to dance to entertain you no mm -mm. I'm here to show you how to dance I'm not here for your entertainment you lose, lose support that just means they're not ready yet that's fine listen it's totally fine totally fine and what are they gonna do what did the baby do cry <laughs> lash out because they can't articulate how they really feel i was on there with this guy he would over talk me cut me off yell no the bible don't say that you're deceived hold on let me show you like your bible does say that and i want to show you no 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 okay Okay, that's how we're going. So it reminded me why I talk to you guys. Why I talk to people who are, are learned. Why I talk to people who have compassion. And I'm not forcing anything, whoever's listening to this, this far into this talk. Like, you're here for a reason. No mistake. You're searching. I get the messages every day in my inbox. Literally, three days ago, the message said, Somebody who partnered with me on Patreon, it said, thank God for your ministry. I just found you. I have been out of church for a long time, but I love the Lord. And I went to church 
and they found out that I believe in aliens and they made fun of me. And uh, so then I went on Google or, or Spotify and typed in um, Christian alien or Christian mystic or something like that. And I found your podcast. And when I did, I felt like I was at home. I felt like I was at home. Do you guys know I get that? That's Those are daily. It's daily. I knew I was at home. Thank you for your ministry. And I knew that I can be myself. I can be weird. You guys know what the definition of weird is, right? If you don't, the word weird means supernatural or uncanny. Shusik is weird, y'all. He's, he's just weird. I love him, but he's weird. Yeah, you're right. You're weird. Supernatural. Uncanny. Digging out of what we thought it was to step into what it really is. Now we can prophesy. Now we can speak to it. Life, creativity, infinite potential. In each breath. I forgive you, man. No, you don't. I don't want your forgiveness. Okay, well, I want it. <laughs> I forgive you. Um, that's the power of your words. The power of you saying yes to what you're called to do. It ain't just for you. It's for the others. Yeah, there's fulfillment in it. For sure, beyond your wildest dreams. But it's for the others too. It is for the others. Um, so afterwards, I, you know, thinking like, man, come on, bro. You like worried about what them people are going to say about you. So you join to try to take up for yourself. And I'm contemplating. I'm wrestling. That's what I do. That's what we all do. Just about different things. So done in such a weird way, right? Um, but the beauty of it is we can forgive. We can forgive. And um, a little bit tried to sink into my heart of like that bitterness. So yeah, that's why I don't talk to Christians because all religious people are like this. All Christians are like that. And it's trying to sit into your heart. This, the bitterness and it's trying to get in because it's going to change the way you talk to people. It's going to change the. It's going to change your why. Why you got into it. Get the bitter. The goal is to get the bitterness out. But I feel a little bit coming in. It's like, oh, that was a reminder why I don't talk to those people, because all are like this. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Not the. No, there ain't no all. Nothing. No all. Nothing. Those people who represent that. Okay, yeah. But there's some people who want to come out. Some of those people need what I got because that was the ceiling. Whatever this person represents, what they bring to the table, it's a ceiling. Oh, y'all believe in, wow, the saints? Wow, I was told they were, I was told not to make an image of anything too. Why do saints do that? What do they mean? What do they, you question, you contemplate, you roll, and you ask, and then you elevate. You're given, you're given an upgrade. You unlock a new level, a new realm. So I felt the idea is to feel it. Hold on, that's foreign. Once you know who you are and you get in that place of bliss and then a, something foreign tries to slip in, it wants to get comfortable. No, 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 we're not, no bitterness, no. You pay too much, it's too much. You got rid of too much bitterness to let any more in. Let me deal with that. Ain't no all Christians, nothing. Ain't no all black people, nothing. Ain't no all fat people, nothing. Ain't no all rednecks, nothing. Ain't no all rich people. Ain't no all handicapped. Ain't no nothing. People are people, individuals, and they're in all kinds of things. They're doing things because they don't know who they are. I tried to tap into he mentioned Billy Graham. Do you win souls like Billy Graham won souls? Do, is that what your, your goal is, to preach the gospel and win souls like Billy Graham? And I was like, I felt the same way I felt when I talked to the Catholic lady. Because I was like, man, to be honest with you, no, not like that, but, but Billy Graham in my awakening helped to set me free. Because, and I almost caught myself because I didn't want to tell him. Because I knew that if he looked this up, or believed it, that it would tarnish the way he saw Billy Graham. 
And I didn't want to take that from him. So I tried to catch myself like, you know, what, what did Billy Graham? Okay, well, I put it in one of my songs. Like Billy Graham said that there's people that are a part of every religion, every walk of life, every faith. They may be Muslim, they may be Christian, they may be Buddhist, they may be Catholic, they may be Islamic, from all of these traditions, but they're part of the body of Christ and they don't even know it. Maybe they've never heard the name of Jesus before, but they're still a part of the body of Christ because they know deep down within them that they need something greater than themselves and are reaching out to the only thing that they know that's around them at the time, which is Islam, which is this, which is that, and they've identified with it and they've become one of those. He said, those people are part of the body of Christ. This is Billy Graham, the greatest evangelist of our day. At the end of his life, after he's had time to contemplate, he's had time to right the wrongs and to think about how he was preaching. And I shared, and, and uh, that's the thing, that's, it's called cognitive dissonance. That the guy was like, nope, nope, Billy Graham didn't say that. He would never say that. And I was like, oh man. Because I know when you hear it, you're going to have to come up with a, an excuse on why he said it. Go read the comment sections. They're all in there. Billy Graham's a Freemason too. Okay. Okay, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Billy Graham is... He got deceived at the end of his life. He did it for the money. He became a universalist. No, at the end of his run, he said, man, there's a, God loves everybody, man. And the wheat and the tares come up together and they're sitting on your pews next to each other. We talk about agreeing with each other. They got Christians sitting next to each other in, in the church that they're, they're not in it. They don't think the way you think. They don't love the way you love. Here's the awakening, but there's Muslims that do. <sighs> Destroy those boxes in Jesus' name. There's, there's people in the LGBTQ uh, community that love God just like you, that seek God with an open heart, that they say, try my heart, God, judge me. I love you so much. Teach me your ways that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart. They're in those things that you said that they're not. They're in Catholicism in a small bookstore in Ponchatoula, Louisiana, in the same heart to know God and to seek. They have the same thing. But the one next to you, the person next to you in your church, they don't. It's like, oh no, you're racist, dude. Like, you said that. You could do you're cheating on your wife? Wow. The Muslim like honors his wife, man. He honors his kids and like Oh man, but you don't know. No, I'm, I'm not judging all anything. Those are boxes that are being destroyed. All nothing. If it's all anything, it's only it's your. It's because you're not demonstrating the power and love that you have. It's not intoxic. It's not. It doesn't get people intoxicated. Alcohol gets them more intoxicated than your love. It does. Opiates get people. Opiates make people feel like. There's no um, worry in the world. It brings them comfort. Opiates do. Drugs and alcohol, pornography addiction. Like those things are bringing more comfort than, than your religion. They do. So, who's got to change? The drugs and alcohol, or opiates? They're not going anywhere. You. You have to be an expression of Christ here. Because, yeah, we got... Listen, everything is okay. We're connected to eternity, into a realm where everything is good. We're connected to the beginning where God saw everything. He called it good. And then he tells Adam, listen, you got the same power. I'm going to create these situations and scenarios, these things. Whatever you say it will become, Adam. What is that? It's animals. Well, that's a cow. I'm going to call that a cow. Great. Awesome. It's a cow. What is that, Adam? It's a fox. Fox, great, cool, cool name, love it. What's that thing? Oh, that's this, that's that. Okay, awesome. You did it with animals now, with people, with circumstances, with situations. You still have that power to call things that are not as though they are. And they become what you call them. In your cosmos, in your temple, it becomes that. It responds that way. So there's levels 
levels of unlearning, levels of power, levels of awe, levels of wonder. The false prophets operate on a level of wonder. What do you mean? Magic. Yeah, magic. Uh, miracles. Most people don't like magic. Miracles. Signs and wonders. Okay. False prophets operate in, in like all lying signs and wonders. They're lying. They're not true. They're faking them. They're faking them. Pretending. There's a plant in the audience. Even today, YouTube deliverance videos that are faked. Plants in the audience. Yeah. Look it up. False prophets have that power. False prophets get a very similar reaction out of people. I told you it's the same word. To be amazed, astonished, as when Jesus did something, same word is used when the false prophets do it. But we read, it says that they were bewitched. No, they were astonished too, but just in a bad way. They were tricked. They don't even know it. We were bewitched. Who has bewitched you? So easily bewitched you. Be able to tap into that. So like looking at Chris Angel. Chris Angel like tells people that he doesn't like contact spirits or do like ritual magic or nothing. He tells you that at the beginning of his episodes. I used to watch it. He's like, listen, these are illusions. There is no nothing else. This is all sleight of hand. Whew. Look at that quarter behind your ear. That's a false prophet, a lying sign and wonder. It can trick people. But the real, on the other hand, the people who are really tapped into that, who can really perform a miracle, who are really tapped. Isn't that a slap in the face for people who are really ritually pure? They've purified themselves and they've become a vessel for, um, for love, for Christ to literally manifest and move things and, do, and have power like the early church did. They'll say that these these Catholic peop people are um, demon possessed and they're deceived and all of that, just because they're operating in something that you've never operated in. Well, how about you haven't gone that length? They're showing you the fruit of what happens when you pray eight hours a day. They're showing you the fruit of what happens when you forgive people. Speak life that you may live it becomes what you say it is I love the mechanics of it I love the awareness of it people grieve over their sin they're in places where they they know they need help they don't want to stay there there's more in them and they beat themselves up but I tell them it's good why? Why is it good? This isn't good. No, no, no. It's good because you can identify it. You see it there. You know who it's bad for? The ones who are bewitched. Because they've been given over to a reprobated mind that they would believe a lie. They don't even know they've been deceived. And we people project that. I'm not projecting. You project it on yourself if it's, if it's the shoe fits. Who's been deceived? Me, you, them, who, that, they, they, whatever. Everyone, the, whole, the Bible says the entire world. And there's levels of deceit and of deception. But it's for you to come out of it. The idea that you can identify it means that you can name it. You see that big creature over there, Adam? What is it? I don't see it. I don't see it. Well, when you see it, call it something and it'll become that. The fact that you can see whatever it is that you're struggling with and you know it. Man, it's alcohol. Man, it's this. Man, it's that. Okay, that's good. Why is it good? I can't get out of it. Well, you can now you can. And once you come out of it, you'll know how to deal with it if it tries to come back. Because, yeah, like the movie, sometimes they come back with seven stronger spirits. But when it's out or it's a thing, you can address it you can deal with it. Speak to the things that are not as though they are. And what? It will become. That's the breath. That's the Ruach. It's the breath of God. The Numa. The Numa I breathe. 
essence animates all life, connects us all. I'm not separate from you. The guy who exposed me, listen, that's a younger version of myself. I did the same thing. We're Catholics. I did the same thing. So I got to honor him where he is. I'm not finna force him to eat a steak. I'm not finna force him to grow up. Listen, enjoy your, enjoy your ignorance. Ignorance is bliss. Enjoy it. It's cool, man. You got everything figured out. It's cool. The arrogance, because you know that pride cometh before what? A fall. Pride and arrogance come before humbling experiments. And guess what? Persecution comes before an upgrade. <laughs> Judgment comes before an upgrade. People judge you. Circumstances, situation judges you. God judges you. You know how to make sure that those people can't judge you and God doesn't judge you? Judge yourself. Judge yourself righteously. Don't beat yourself up. Don't it's, Listen, judging and condemning are two different things. The Bible says a spiritual man judges all things, but he himself is judged of none. Judge yourself. Govern yourself. Govern yourself. If you govern what I've given you, and you're a good governor, you're a good steward of the things of God, I'll give you more because I can trust you. Govern that conflict. Govern those feelings. Yeah, but I ought to. Oh, you ought to. They ought to do that to you. What about when you were caught? What about when you were this? What about when you said that? They ought to. No, wouldn't be here. We got what we ought to. Ought to ain't nothing. Judge, your, judge yourself righteously. Learn to do that. That's how you are able to be aware. And you're already stepping into that if you're realizing the bad parts of yourself. But I pray God shows you the good parts of yourself. You're not going to know the bad parts unless you know the... You're not going to know the good unless you know the bad. And vice versa. It's contrast. I know what it's like to be happy because I know what it's like to be sad. I know what it's like to be full because I know what it's like to be hungry. Because you know what it's like, you'll be able to show compassion to those who are still in it. Those who are still in it. You know, people are still in it, but pretending that they're not. We all, I'm, I'm vocalizing these feelings because you guys feel them too. Yeah, I'm not racist. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not those things. You fighting with it daily. Identify it. Tell it what to become. Tell it what it is. Put it in its rightful place. I I know why you're, I, I, that prejudice is there. I was beat up by so and so many black people. I was, listen, it was my star. Grew up in the hood, in trailer parks. That's just black people. That's one thing. That's not all black people. All rednecks. I was beat up by rednecks too. At other schools. And I went to all white schools. And you're the only one that you talk like a black person. Those those comments are all over my feed. I'm a rapper. It helps. It actually helps with it. But but the idea what, what what do you think rap what do you think black? What does that mean to talk like a black? You mean uneducated or why am I trying to sound black? Like, hold on. Why would you say that? Identify your triggers. Because if you don't, if you don't heal from the things that cut you, you'll bleed on people who didn't cut you. It's coming out of you. Yeah, it's coming out. Your, your racism sleep slipping out of you on the job site with like a, a really cool employee that's Chinese slipping out. Why did you say that? You can't take it back once you say it. You can apologize. You don't, it doesn't, you can't. You'll give an account for every idle word that you say. Deal with it. Identify it. Why am I this? Why am I that? That's contemplation, man. When you contemplate, when you, I tell you, judgment 
upgrade comes after judgment. If you're judging yourself, the angels and demons ain't got to judge you because you're a good judge. You're a governor. Governor. Do you not know that we'll, we are to judge the angels? How much more should we judge ourselves? Do you know that we're to judge the body of Christ? If you can't, if you're taking Christians to court, your brothers and sisters, and you can't handle these matters in a, in, in a civil way, will you want greater responsibility? No. 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 Do you know what you would do? You're asking for a platform, you're asking for, to take off, you're asking to launch. Do you know what you would do if you launched? Have you ever had that happen? Have you ever had, do you know what it's like? Do you know what it feels like energetically? For churches to, to make fun of you? For the pastor to say stuff about you from the pulpit and just change your name? Do you know what that feels like? Like energetically, to, that there's people speaking all manner of evil against you. Can you carry that? Be careful. Be careful. Listen, you can have a... That's why they changed the comment section for children's stuff. You can have little kids that come on here and color and draw and do it on YouTube. Go look at the comment section. If they're going to do that to them, what are they going to do to you? But what's in you? They're doing it anyway. That's what they're... It's in them. Whatever they've become a home for, a house for, it's speaking through them. They're a vessel of that. What are you a vessel of? Do you show compassion to those who don't deserve it? Well, most likely, somewhere in your story, you were shown compassion. No, I was just born this way, man. I just love everybody. No, I used to hate myself and everybody. Oh, really? Tell me more. Yeah, that's my story. I used to be um, infatuated with death, taking myself out as a teenager. Now I'm infatuated with living and life and beauty and love, daydreaming about love. I used to daydream on wicked things. It used to keep me up at night. It was in my heart. God gives you the desires of your heart. Even by proxy of you just being in, being a magical person that if you want it bad enough, you'll go get it. That's the fact that you can go get it. So have your heart renewed, have your desires renewed. And it says that if we delight ourselves in him, the scripture says, he'll give us the desires of our heart. But it's a catch 22. Because the more that you delight yourself in him, the more that you enjoy him, the more your heart's changed. And I don't desire the things I used to desire anymore. I used to desire to be right. I used to desire for you to like me. I used to desire for to disprove Christians. I used to desire like evil things. That's evil things, right? You know, it's just misconstrued and it's out of its purpose. I used to do it because out of the abundance of your heart come out of your mouth. You just wait long enough. It's going to come out. The racist guy, he's not racist around certain people. He's only racist around that those people. It's going to come out. Let it I, be aware. Judge. Man, I can't believe I said that. So next time you feel it, come. <clears throat> nope. I'm not going to say that. Lord, help me. Lord, help me, Lord. Hold my tongue, Lord. Lord, help me. I almost said, ooh, I want this. Caught yourself, right? Good. You know you shouldn't be saying that. People are listening. People are watching. Even though you can't see them. That revelation is so huge, too. Friends in high places. We're right at three hours. Less than a minute from a three-hour talk. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much. We're going to do a um, hangout tonight um, on Patreon for the School of the Mystics Thursday night hangout. For those of you who want to be a part of that, the link is in the description. Um, we do it every Thursday night, Sunday morning. We do breath work. We hang out. We ask questions. Um, we tap in. We just say hello to like-minded people. 
what's up dude good to meet you man like go go check it out all my music my meditations everything's available there patreon.com backslash truth seeker i'd love to meet you if you want to be a part of that go check it out you can go to that or my website as well go to my website to get my free meditation throne room if you've not encountered it it'll rock your socks off throne room meditation truthseeker.com love you guys we will do it again so many uh beautiful conversations just hit 500 episodes consistency it's awesome thank you guys for being on this journey with me and uh walking hand in hand with each other you got this shalom peace everybody we'll do it again